Okay, guys, there you have it. So in this course, we will build this short cutscene in Unity. My name is MC Johnny, and I'll be your instructor for this course. So we started a while ago. We started with a series of courses. If you go to bestrated.net, you can get all the other courses we started with. We started with direct modeling course in Houdini. That's where we build the bike and the character for this course. But all these courses, the techniques and the tricks that I show, you can use it anywhere. For this course, we build our own Unity character rig, which is Unity character rigging and animation course. All these are paid for courses, but I'm giving you guys this course for free. Check the description. There will be a link only for you to buy the access and the bike and the character to follow this course. That will be in the description. I also will have another course, but I want you guys to subscribe and like this course. Okay. That one will be more fun. I will show you the preview right now. That will be path following and particles in unity. So this will be the power funding, the cause that is coming after this one. Let's talk a little bit about our cause right now. So in this cause, it's mostly keyframe animation and Unity Cinemachine virtual cameras okay so we will learn how to keyframe keyframe sound easy but there are so many little tricks that i'll show you guys with the new unity timeline we will use signals we will use um all kind of tricks we we'll spend a lot of time on the dope sheet and the curve editor so you need these little tricks because when you want to create a little short cut scene most of the time you have to animate things around so that's why we didn't leave this course. We want to make it even a major part of our series. Okay. So stick around and let's roll. Okay, guys welcome let's look at what we're going to need from houdini before we jump into unity to get into unity and put together this animation and the effect we're going to need uh these two objects right the main bike and then our rider and then to get the effect we have to put together some stripes so if i turn on these stripes you see if i turn the bike off you see that we also have copies of the stripes though if i say stripes stripes are these glow you know effects on the bike okay these stripe these scion colors stripes okay if i turn if we go into the stripes we have this metal part okay turn off and this is the stripe so let's turn off the rider too so we know what we're looking at so these are the stripes okay and, and it's a copy of about three of them see so if we get into the stripes you know i copy about one two three four of them okay so it's four of them and then it's kind of like a series of revering them right so we will go through we will show maybe the bigger one and then another one you know they will come in gonna affect them by their scale all right 
So we will change the scaling of as we are animating in Unity. So we will get this blending with the metal effect. Okay. The stripes will blend with the metal effect. See, and then we will have that part simulated, right? The, the illusion like the bike is kind of coming from the sky before it comes down. Stuff like sci-fi kind of thing, right? So the bike, instead of the bike sitting on the floor, he jump into the sky and then start revealing the bike. So that is the effect we will go for. So to, to achieve that, we have to create these, you know, copies of the stripes and made our own um, inner effect. So if I turn off all the stripes again, we can go into the metal effect and see how I created this too. For, for those of you guys that have already taken um, direct modeling in Houdini, this will be something very easy for you guys to do. It's very easy. If I show you guys, even if you haven't taken that course, it should be very easy. Okay. So let's, let's jump into this metal part and see how I made it. So we come in, start with a polydraw. Remember polydraw from direct modeling? Polydraw. So the polydraw will draw, if we bring the view here, we just drew one side of the face. You see, just one sided face. Okay. You can see that it's on one side. Okay deleting some of the lines so that comes in the dissolve let's go back and turn off the bite the next thing i did was so i can have another poly draw but not necessarily that i'm drawing surface it could be that i'm doing other stuff that's why you can see poly draw number one and two going on then I have fuse, fuse joining all the points that are not close together to join so that everything is tight, right? For poly extrude. So poly extrude come in. If we bring it here, now you can see that, you know, we pull things out from the suffix. Okay. And if we go back to fuse, you see that we have a lot of polygons individual polygons right that we are dealing with right now so when we extrude the poly extrude we can have individual polygons being extruded see so we come up here we have individual elements all right extruding out see and this is the faces we extruded okay and then we have a uh, poly inset two on uh, over here. Then we inserted the faces, right? We squeeze them in, and then we will delete all these polygons we have squeezed inside from each one of the individual extrusion, right? So we will blast it. So that will be gone. See, so it's gone. So we have something like little boxes extruding out then we did another extrusion this time on the on the top side over here okay so if we come in we see on top over here we have another inset right from the poly extrude this time inset for the top part so we're going to get all these parts deleted too so we do the same we blast it out so it looks like we're having some kind of a cage or a frame net kind of so you don't have to do the same any way you can come up with something like this works right but as you can see it's not even this side is kind of smaller this side is bigger so i wanted all the extrusion and everything work the same or be even on both sides so i introduced what clip from direct modeling you guys know what clip do right so we cut it into two 
so that we can mirror it and have each side of it being equal sided right so from this explanation if you have direct modeling this is not hard at all and it's not even hard because you can be creative and create different things for this effect all right so i just use this real quick i could have even do something way different than this so it's up to you okay and then all i do is what i will mirror this side so we have an even sided right and it's giving us this round shape like it's the bike instead of before it was sliding okay so we apply some of the direct modeling techniques and we have the frame for the for the metal part of the effect it have a glass shade material on it that's why we're getting these you know reflections going on it's a glass shaded material so we come to materials come here it's right here the first one of these grass tinted material you can use okay that's one of them that i use so so basically that is how the metal part was put together okay so we will animate the stripes with it so where is the stripe we turn them off we can turn them back on you see so as he jams these stripes will start animating from here you see so let's say it's one now and it will start like zero right and we'll start animating it out you know to make it bigger but we'll do all this stuff in unity use unity timeline to get all this effect all right so in the next class we will move on to sending all these things out okay guys so now that we have an idea what we need let's send it out to unity okay so let's export it to unity okay because we're not going to go back and forth from houdini to unity we can simply export it from here you know direct instead of using the plugin but there's a plugin that can link from houdini to unity our next export i will show you the process all right but for now let's just use the regular export from far export fbx and then we will pick the object we want to export first let's let's grab the main bike okay accept come here where you want it to export to my desktop and export okay so let's name it dot fbx okay accept then we don't have no animation for the bike so we can just keep it at export current frame and current okay the rest could be you can leave the regs at the default then export let's export the stripes okay let's do that the next is the rider himself right that would be right here it's two of them there's this old one if you if, if you remember that we don't need this is the one we've been working on right so we're going to go for the bike rider okay For him we need an animation for him so let's grab the range from 1 to 240 okay and we can keep it at current so that the animation name will be a tick export with tick okay if we pick main the animation 
name will be main okay so let's keep it at current okay the rest is default is okay so we will export the bike rider so basically we have what we need right now we have the rider we have the bike and the stripes okay the next class we will start working on them in unity so i'll see you guys in the next class okay guys welcome okay let's get into unity start creating our cut scenes all right unity hub right here let's create a new project we come in and we create a new eventually we'll be working on high definition okay because we want to get the quality is, is one aspect of of this course all right so we will jump into high definition but for setting up and you know cutting our animation moving around getting our you know our project set up we don't want to be dragged with the high definition so let's start with a basic scene all right a basic project the simplest one and then eventually we can install the high definition render pipeline so the unity package make it simple to do that all right so let's name it what let's make it unity underscore here is where we will create a new folder to save our project so let's create our own for our course right now so we name it unity underscore our name okay so we have that we have to select that this is the process of creating our project remember so we will select this folder and where you save your unit projects is where you will go see i have a lot of projects and mine is under 2019 and it's still even getting bigger all right so we will select this folder we just created and boom okay so we have a place where our project will stay we name it and we are using the basic 3d and then eventually we will jump into what high definition that's that's it right so we will create it this is our project and this is the default interface you know so as we create a new project this is what we have you know when you come back you come up here to the layouts it's it's running at the default okay so this is the default you're seeing you, you can get those um white stuff from the sprite max if you want that if you notice most courses and tutorials you can't even read unity screen all right and read what is going on because they are very little so i made i made it easier for you guys okay but let me get you guys around real quick you know so the new interface is pretty much the same it's just that it's kind of looking sharper very nice and new icons it's mostly new icons as you are creating stuff you will see that most stuff are coming in with new cool icons all right and everything is kind of sharp kind of all right so it's not crazy crazy but it's okay all right cool so let me get my my layout so that I, I i show you guys around with that because that is what we will use okay my layout allow us to have the timeline around here because you see this course is mostly cutscene we're going to deal with them cameras and animation and stuff right so we need a wider space so this is the setup i have all right and instead of jumping back on the game and the scene i have a little game window here all right we can get it bigger just to see start just to see what is going on and if we want to see 
bigger um, game, we can just bring it bigger, or we can maximize and play full screen. I have a lot of stuff all over at different places. As we are working, you you guys will see why I need them sometimes. Because sometimes I'll be here and I need to have another hierarchy here to grab stuff for here. I need to have, even here, we will end up adding more stuff here. You see, I have hierarchy here, then the inspector. Inspector need to be wider so we can read better, right? Like if you select the light, you should be able to see stuff very good. Okay, basically you guys know how to get around. And the only thing you will see me doing as far as the interface is probably like jumping around like I'm telling you and then dragging the windows. That is when you go over the intersection, all right? And you use the left mouse and you drag, all right? So the timeline is where we will be. We will lock it. So we get around, it'll stay the same. So the next thing I want to show you is when you get your fresh scene like this, all right, you go up here to edit and project settings. Okay, here you see that uh, for the graphics, we are not working on any high definition render pipeline right now. When we do, when we install it, we will grab it or automatically it will be up here because there is none right now. Okay. So we are working under a basic regular scene, all right, setup. So eventually we will have HD pipeline coming in here. That is under graphics, all right. Editor, you will leave stuff at default. Uh, input is when we are dealing with games and then we will come in and make our own access. I'll have a course on games and stuff. So eventually you, we will be working here in another courses, right? So fix six is you come in and you make changes right, working in games and stuff. So the other thing for this course probably will change is the gamma. Okay, the color space. Because you need it to get the high definition working. By default, it will be a linear and then you change it to gamma. Okay, so basically we are set and then the next thing I'll show you is here, the package manager. And this is what we have here. All these we can install, the ones that we don't have. To see the ones we have, you come in here and you pick in projects. Okay, so in our project right now, we have Rider Editor, Test Framework, Test Mesh Pro, Timeline. Unity Collaborate, Unity UI, and Visual Studio Code Editor, all right? But this is basic, so we don't have a lot of stuff going on. So we are good to run freely. So after we get crazy and we come in, we will select all packages. And if we have something that we have downloaded ourselves, it will be under our own assets, right? Stuff that you already bought in, um, Unity Asset Store, and you want to like have them, you can go into your folders and grab them. So let's go back to all packages. So eventually we will come in and install high definition render pipeline. You see, it will allow us to install it. Okay. If we have picked this as our creation of our new project, everything will be installed already. But then our computer by now is still processing all this stuff and it will be running on high memories and stuff. But we don't need that right now. So when we, we need to make stuff look good, we will come in and we will install it. All right, guys. So basically that's it. We have a new project set up and in the next class, we will come in and start bringing in Assets, right? Stuff that we work out from Houdini, we bring them in here and start working. I'll see you in the next class. Okay, guys, welcome. Now we get to bring in our assets, right? The character, the bike, and the and the stripes. Remember, we we send them out from Houdini. So let's go to the desktop. 
opening the export folder get back to unity and here we can just drag and drop them into our project but before that let's get a little organized right it's very important let's get to project scene this is the assets we already have scenes from the creation of the project okay so this is the basic simple scene but we want to have a folder that will contain only stuff that we're going to be working on so under the access we can right click and create a new folder unity underscore cap scenes okay and then when we go into the unity cut scenes here we can start get our individual project folders right like Okay, so we have three for now. We will, we will end up having more. We're going to have a folder for, you know, every aspect of it, like, you know, scripts, sounds, and stuff like that. But we're going to work on the character. So we get into the character folder. So under Unity Casting, our main folder, we have characters. And in here is empty. Okay, so that is how you get organized. So you close it. You can have... All kind of other stuff here and then you are now mixing them all over all right so inside our characters here we can start bringing in the stuff okay we just drag and drop them okay so when we have all of them inside we can close this folder and clean up the console all right these are warnings that are basically from the characters they are not really important so we can ignore and clear the console all right you can see that there are four modules here the first one is the model the second is the rig animation and then materials okay so there's a preview window when we come to the model you will see most of the time it will be folded down like this you go over it there's a two small lines and you drag it up see so it's kind of a little preview so it's too little for us but there is a little trick you go over the line again see and you right click it pops that window up so you look around you see stuff and we go to materials we find out that this time we can drop this thing we can pop it up anytime okay if you want to see what's going on we can see that there's no material materials that didn't come with it okay it will be a basic material Go back to character, select the character, then inside your material, drag and drop these basic materials for the band. Eventually, we will change them. Okay, we will change and make stuff look better. For the first four objects, those are the body parts of the character. Okay, these three, we can leave it like that. Okay, and apply. Okay guys, so now when we go back to model and we pop the window open, you see that we have a basic material for it, okay? So that it distinguishes it from the helmet and it's not everything black, you know? Eventually we will get the materials and stuff inside here and we'll start working on those kind of changes, all right? But what we are interested in right now is to see that our character came in with the animation. Our purpose was to be able to convert it into a humanoid. That's why we created our own Unity rig in the, in the other course, the rigging course, right? 
all right so we will go to the animation and see if the animation came in before we even spend time messing with the type of animation we're going to have all right so the same process we pop it open we look around he's here all right now we can hit play There you have it. Our animation came in. Just look around with, with the mouse. You drag the mouse around, middle mouse, zoom in, zoom out. It's kind of like animation editor preview window. Okay, we just pop it open bigger. Normally, it's down here. Okay, so we got the animation he first ran, jump, come down, sit on the bike, he throws something, that's about it, then he falls. So this basic cut is what we're going to do, you know, and it's probably in the next class or something. So we have, we have the character in, okay? So the next thing we will do is to convert it and then in the next class we will start cutting the animation into pieces all right so let's go to to the rig okay and here you know the default animation type that unity brings in the one we created you know we create animation it come in as fbx the fba comes in the default type of animation unity process is generic okay that means only this character can play this animation that it came with. No other character in your project can use it. Only the character that came with it. There's another option that we can switch to. Legacy. Legacy is the old Unity animation type. But what we are interested in is the humanoid. The humanoid is the one that will allow you to use other characters animation so let's try do that under rig switch from generic to humanoid okay and the next avatar definition see this character rig is a custom we build for ourselves right and remember we have a female character too that are using the same uh, skeleton right let's use skeleton for you guys to get comfortable with so the same skeleton if I have another character that have the same skeleton and it's already in the process of doing all kind of stuff I can use the avatar so that I don't change things around too much so he will still be acting like the old character I have but we want to create this humanoid from this character if we want to create it from this model so we're gonna stay with this option the default from this character he's gonna have his own avatar all right so the next thing is apply because now you can see animation type is what humanoid created from this model and then the configuration is here we can open it and see you know if we have to make some little tweaks so let's open it Okay, so, so from the configuration, we can see that everything is green, which means it passed it, all right? And our character is so small, but eventually we will, we will scale it up, you see? So the character is here, and it's here, it's in T-pose. This is where we are interested in. Everything is green for the body. See, it's break down into body, head, and left hand and right hand so the body passed everything is green okay so this is where the mapping comes in so hips to hips it's possible that you can have i've already shown you in the previous um calls i think it's possible that you can have the mapping completely wrong 
because if we have brought in Houdini auto ray character, it will get everything wrong basically. Okay, that's why it's good that we created our own character and make things so easy. So we don't have to do nothing. If we had this wrong, we have to go in and pick the right one. Okay, see all the bone stretches are here, but it looks like we got them right. So that is how you check them. Okay, but we can see that from the hand, it needs a little bit. All right, he didn't. It didn't pick these ones. All right. So in the next class, we will fix these ones that it didn't grab. You know, so that if we give another character animation to it, and he is folding the arms, all these bones will fold right. Okay. Right now, the character we will give him, it won't be able to fold this thumb. Uh, intermediate bone okay so we will fix everything in the next class before we start cutting the animation all right after you apply changes to the muscles and settings and everything is okay for you then you will hit done so we are back at the default settings for the character so in the next class continue by com completing the configuration and it will start cutting our animation into you know, how we create it okay guys welcome the last class we we had the humanoid configured right but it needed a little bit of tweaking basically but remember the model is very little right and it's because of you know it's coming from houdini houdini use meter like for one unit for one meter right and here is converting it unity is converting the units very down to 0 0.01 right it have to be one which will match unity meters right so like we don't have to do nothing if it is not converting the the size of the character so now if i drop the character into the scene see we can barely see it all right it's very little okay so you know normally you will you will you will, you will come in here and you will scale the scale factor you, you you pump it up or you change it from here but in most cases it's, it's scaling is always good to keep it at one you know based on other things that you process effects and stuff right so right here at the characters properties if we uncheck the convert units and we apply we will get the character bigger As you can see, it get bigger, right? Like this is how it's supposed to be. It looks like it's in Houdini or something, right? And we have not really changed anything. Not the scale factor here and not in the scene too. See, everything remains one, which is cool. But then um, every time you have to bring stuff in, you have to uncheck this unit convert to 10 right so if you have a lot of stuff it will be a lot of headache and at the same time you have to wait to apply for them it takes a little bit so there is a little code that we can talk to the editor you know but they have to go inside the editor it's an editor code so let me show you real quick okay let's create a new folder the editor And inside the editor, you will create a C-sharp real quick. You 
name it object scale. So we will open this code, but let's clear these. It's still processing, sorry. Let's clear this stuff real quick, okay? And then open this file. So this is the frame, but what we need is, we're gonna talk to the editor, remember? So we definitely need to call the editor. Okay, so we have using Unity Editor and these object scaling, the scaling is not coming from mono behavior. It's coming from the access post processor, okay? So it's like the models processing stuff. So it comes from the assets post processor, all right? And we can delete these codes and I'll write it real quick, okay? Okay, guys, so is this simple code? So all we are doing is this um, model importer that, you know, it's a class, right? Use file scale is false. So it's the same as we are doing here. When we go inside the character and we uncheck the convert unit, all right? So it's the same as unchecking this. But, but now that we have it at the editor, any object that we will bring in it will tell the model to to have this on check so it will be right away it will be like this we don't have to come in and wait and apply to make changes all right so it's very useful but it's kind of like you don't need to have it now you know maybe you are having a big project it will be very useful so for now we can save it and keep it at the editor So this is the code and we will save it. Okay, no errors. So at this time, we're going to have a little issue because we have already converted our character into humanoid and we're doing all this configuration, I mean, coding stuff, right? So let's see. Let me show you what I'm talking about because we're supposed to get our character bigger like this, but even if we go into configuration, um, don't save, and we come in. You see our character is still small it's now reflecting here at the humanoid setup so let's go back down and convert it to leak uh, generic okay we are doing all this thing because we we converted it to humanoid all right so now it's like we are back to the original right if it is any other object like these you know simple models all you have to do is refresh or I mean re-import them and then they will come in with the new you know no adjustment to the scale thing right so now it's here but we have the code inside right so it should work if we do re-import on these stuffs right so so let's try to re-import this character
okay so we have a rate import and you see that it, it did uncheck this convert them so now it's coming in with the same you know model size like we have from Houdini so if we go back to Reagan and go back to humanoid and apply now if we go inside the configuration you see that we don't struggle to see the character it's already obvious and it's now he's facing us right okay so that is a really good way of you know getting your your stuff inside unity and now mixing with the the scaling all right okay cool so what do we have to do here we have some issue on the left hands okay let's go in so here we're mixing this one so we go and is the the tomp distal the left hand tomp distal left hand okay we got one tom distal remember it's prosima intermediate and distal right so index distal we're missing that so let's go for the index we are still looking for the left fingers all right so index distal so you click here In this is the left okay so middle distal okay guys so we got everything all right so we can force t pose see so everything cleans up all right so we can finish it up right and and move on so apply all these changes all right so we are good so at this point our animation let's see what's going on okay and as you can see after the convection the, the local transform there will be a little changes but that is when we cut the animation and fix all of that stuff all right so now we kind of go down but it's still up in the air a little bit see so in the next class you will start cutting the animation into pieces and getting the ones that we have the loop set and everything all right so i'll see you guys in the next class okay guys welcome so let's continue from the last class okay so uh, a little recap from the last class we were able to create our editor script that allow us to you know maintain a constant flow of our scale factor like how we want our characters to come in so like right now if we drop our character into the scene he maintains the size we brought in we don't change no scale factor here and not even at the object level okay so we are able to uncheck 
the Unity Convert Unit uh, section part of it, which is very cool. The same, we re-import all these, you know, objects so they maintain the same size of the object, which is cool. So that is the recap from the last class. So let's continue on today's class, okay? What I want us to talk about today is optimization because this is part of setting up our game ready to roll right and most of the time when you do the setup right you make things you know easier for you at the later part of your development okay so for my experience what i have learned is you know when we build games a lot of stuff that we don't need goes into the game deployment so optimization is very very important you know this is the word optimize game objects but but this is not what we are talking about we are talking in general how you know you send up games you get little file size and stuff so that is the huge part of game development okay and if you get this part and you you make use of it it will save you a lot of you know headaches okay so animation is very important in game setup okay so i have this package at unity asset store and, we, and if we look at the total size of the package is 65.9 mb and the animation is 180 plus animations so how come it's very little and even this 65 is the characters I gave these two characters as bonus because we don't even need them to be part of the package. You can only get the animation files, which will be like less than 10 MB, very little for all these animations, right? So the package itself, the characters are the one giving it the 65. So if we look at the package, let's see if we can see the animation sizes. I don't think Unity shows the size of the animation all right now let's look at a climb animation click on one and see see unity does not show the actual size of the animation but we will see when we break down our animation the idea is you know we can optimize our characters so that you know we get less file size but there's one tool i want to show you it's called build report tool okay if you're going to build your games for Android, you need this tool, okay? Unless you can write a scripts like this and you can figure things out. You know, there's a profile in Unity, but it doesn't show you stuff that this will show you. This is my own experience I'm giving you, okay? So the build report will tell you what is going in as the deployment, what is going in to your game. The dependencies, the assets, are they being used in the game? And the size of it so the report showing you all this information you will start breaking things down if you have a texture that is um, 10 by 24 and it's a lot of them and they are taking space for my experience I was able to break those 10 24 textures into 512 by 512 and it still looked the same in the game and it reduced the, the game file size to the lowest all right so it's a lot of them the bill report will also tell you stuff that are in the deployment package but they are not part of the game so you can imagine how useful it will help you you know so you need to know this kind of stuff you know to help you when we go into the android platform there are versions of android phones you know for example we can have android lollipop there's android 4.2 the lowest part of it the lower part of the phone industry is more of people using those kind of phones and if your game is optimized and the file size is little those phones can also play them they can download them and it will run smoother on them right so you won't have a situation settings phone will reject your develop um APKs because the file size is huge and all kind of 
you know, version controls and stuff, right? So the optimization is a huge topic, which I will have a class on. All right. But I'm giving you ideas so that you can go into these, you know, sites and check things out yourself. All right. But in our breakdown of our animation, I will show you a trick I use to get my animations file size this little, you know, very little pieces of animations. Because what happened is when you drop your character into the game, this game character is going to your phone because it's part of the of the build, right? Or of the play and everything. This is the, the main player, for example. But maybe as you are developing, you need more animations and you don't have all the animation you need on this character. You bring in a different characters with different animation, which you will convert into what? Into humanoid. So you can use for your character like we did. What happened is if we break this animation down, character down, we see that this is the main animation here. Okay, these are all the objects making the character. You see, you can close it. If we open, these are stuff that are in. And this is the animation, the main. Okay, so we come here. We have the clips main animation. It's from 1 to 124. So this animation is going to go with the character. So what about the ones that we, the characters we would drop in like this? How do we take just the animation out without sending into our game all this stuff from those characters? Okay, because all these stuff are going to occupy space, and because they are attached to the character as an animation, the the game will load the character before it gets to the animation. So you can imagine all this process your phone will go through before it start getting the animation and playing them. It will slow down things so i will show you how after we break down the animation from the characters we know we don't need how we will grab just the animation from it you need to know this kind of stuff who goes on behind the scene to help you so as part of this course and the breakdown of animation we will tackle the, the smaller file size of the animation okay texture uh, visual effects and all that stuff you can optimize to get a very nice and smooth gameplay all right so in the next class you will start breaking it down so this okay guys last class we talk about optimization i just wanted you guys to grab those informations all right so today let's look at our animation tab over here okay and we come down we will find the clips of our animations okay so we're going to grab the animations we need for our character right and we spend a lot of time in houdini by animating our run circle and then jump and then riding so but they are all here from 1 to 240. So we're going to grab the run part, the jump part, and then the throw. There's a throw animation, and then a fall. So we grab those pieces as we will call them by different time in our timeline. Okay. But before we start cutting the pieces, let's look at all these lights over here, similar like a traffic light. But it will give you a green light if you have a loop going on like if you have t pose at frame one and you have t pose at frame 240 you have a matching pose okay so that will give you a loop so so far frame one is t pose frame 240 it have something different so it's now matching our loop is now matching but the root transform rotation frame one and frame 240 are the same so we got a loop match there 
So that's how you get these green and yellow lights. So it's yellow because it kind of looks like it's trying to match. And when it's red, it means it's, there's no way it's going to match. Okay, something like that. So for example, if we put one here, let's assume the 240 have a T pose too. You see that we have green light for everything okay that means everything is matching as the at the end so when you play you will have you know a smooth loop but we only have one frame so we are playing but we don't see nothing going on just to show you the loop how it works okay so we can stop play and change this to 240 Okay. So eventually you go through the animations, you know, you can play them, you can click on the timeline, play and see where you start stopping and grabbing the loops and animation you want, right? But I want us to look at this original and center of mass stuff going on here. Okay. Those are like the position of the character. Okay. So you know, as, as you work very deep into your games, you know, at certain point, you want the, the character facing certain way, you know, the animation happen at a different position uh, in, in the game environment and stuff like that. So these are where you control those kind of stuff. So for example, the root transform rotation based upon the stat, the original, but we have body orientation. Okay, if we pick body orientation, you know, we don't see any difference so far. But that means that where the body is looking at, that is where the rotation will start going on. Right now, if we go to original and we check the offset by giving it a value, you can see that we are rotating the root position of the character, right? We are changing where it's supposed to be in the game. Some some operations, some of your game, you know, setup, you probably want the game, the character to face this way. So it will be part of the animation we will grab. You can change them on the timeline too, okay? But let's keep everything the default. Okay, so that is how you set stuff like that. Okay, so if we come to the Y position, which is controlling the height where the, the character feet will be, right? Right now we can see that it's at the origin. It's touching the ground very nice, right? Everything is levering with the feet and everything. But you might want to change that. That is when you will come in and you say the root transform position Y based on center of mass so where is center of mass okay center of mass of your character is by the hip area the middle part here that's why there's this indication here that is the center of man so if we want the y axis on the floor to be based on the center of mass it will drop down okay based on center of mass the character will go down and the center of mass will be where your your middle part of will be in, in most cases or in some cases you'll find this useful you know but in our situation we want it to be the original or by the feet the feet will be almost the same as the original because this is how it came if it came in and it was probably like this we can use the feet and it will go higher right so it will go to the to the feet because the system know where the feet at you know the foot bones okay so it will it will position the character to that part of it so let's keep the original and it have offset too so maybe we want it to be on the feet but a little higher or something or more down you can do that you will use the offset so that is what these controls are for all right the position and normally it comes in handy on the timeline after we drop 
the animation, we have the options to change this position style. So we will look at that on the timeline too. So, so basically, that is what these you know stuff are for so the, the lights are for the loop match and we already seen that so our first cut of our animation is the run part and you come to the clips our animation that came with the character is the main so if we drop the character objects we will find the main animation here it's right here okay so cancel it will be right here so let's add more animations from this main animations and they are they will come in here too so we will see so our first grab will be you can read the frames numbers from here it will be when he start at four right the t pose help us to get a humanoid setup remember we needed him to be in in t pose to to be easy for us okay so here we will go back to where we started our first pose remember it was at frame four we got this pose when we did the animation in houdini so this is the pose we started with and at 25 he started to jump so we will start cutting it there okay at 25 okay and then before we do that let's go back to one and 224 we need to create the animation before so we come here we have the option to add new animation you see a copy from the main so the new copy is here but it's still coming with the same length of animation so let's name this one before we change the length so that will be our run right so enter after you change the name you enter it so we have the main clip and run clip and they are all the same length so we know that our run start from 4 to 25 very simple and then you enter or you apply these changes So to add another animation, so now we have the run animation starting from 4 to 25. Our next one will be the jump, okay? But we have to make sure we are on the main animation, the first one, and we will add another one from it, okay? Because we can add one from the run, but there's no jump animation right now in the run because we cut it, okay? So we can grab a little part of it if we want to. But we want our run circle so we come to the main animation and then we will name this copy one yeah? then enter so so we will come in we know we get our last one from 25 which was the run but we don't know where the jump ends the jump the end is where he get comfortable sitting down on the bike that pose right so we can see from 25 we checking the frame numbers here from 25 we scroll so at this point we can say before he start making another move any part from here can be the jump animation end so let's make it 50 okay so he will start jumping from 25 to 50. Okay, so we can apply. Okay, so our drive will start from 62. Okay, so at 62, he will be sitting on the bike on the lower level, right? And it shouldn't be moving. So we will, he will be still 
until he started throwing. Okay, so from 60 to 80 can be our driving animation. Okay, so 62 to 80. And you can see because the drive, everything is the same. We got loop for everywhere, right? Okay guys, so with the same process, we got all the animation we want, right? So if we click on each one of them, you will see the length of it. So this is the main, which is 1 to 240, run, 4 to 25, jump, 25 to 50, drive, 62 to 80, throw, 80 to 113, 4, 140 to 172. So you will look through the animation and you grab them all right but anytime you will add new animation you will come to main okay and you add a new one if we select four we can delete it from the negative one over here okay so that is how you create those animation but before we end this class i want to show you how you grab these animation files from the character because now you can see everything is linked to the character here right okay all the animation we created are still part of the of the character so to grab the the animation by itself we will click on run very simple all we do is control d duplicate it control d see if we close the character we have the run animation by itself very cool this is what unity will use in your game just this okay you don't need we can delete the character right now and we will still have the animation the run animation because it's it's just a file it's just the bones that the character is going to read is in the file okay so it's very low in size if we come down here it's 11.4 kb just for the run animation 11.4 kb okay very little in your game so imagine in your game you have 25 animations and each one is just 11.4 kb it's less than 1 mb very little so you grab those animation from the character just by selecting the jam control d to duplicate it okay so when you duplicate the animation from the character it become independent and unity will save this file in your project so we have it at this point if if we give it to another character we don't need to have this main character is coming from unity have processed just the file because the system the human noise system is reading the file rotation the scaling the positions and stuff and everything is here in the file okay so if you select this you only have the file and we can still control the positions and the offset and everything on our timeline if we use that that is how you get those little animation file sites. Okay, so you can create more of those and then you can package it like I showed you earlier. So we got all the animations we need. All right, guys. So I'll see. Okay, guys. Let's get 
little set up and organized, okay? Let's create a new folder. The characters, let's drop the animation into the animation folder. Now let's create another folder. Textures, okay? And in here is empty. Let's go to the desktop, open this resources folder. Side of textures. Let's grab this, hold ship. Hammock folder. And later on, the girl, let's drop that chest chest too. Okay, cool. So we're getting a little organized, all right? We mix our timeline. Let's go up here. Windows sequence timeline. Okay, it will be up here. We want it down here so that we have this wide screen at the same time maintaining our scene not jumping back and forth all right cool if i select the character it's asking me do you want to create a timeline for that character we're going to have one for the character but we want our main timeline that is not linked to anybody yet okay so we we'll go up here or we can be here and create an empty object rename this empty object to main timeline okay we don't have animation tracks yet okay we only have the timeline window so it will be still listening to us to let him know if we want to you know create something so if i select the character it will ask us do we want to create a timeline for this access okay we want to create one for the empty game object we created. All right. So create timeline. We don't have a timeline folder because we're going to end up creating more timelines. So let's make a folder for our timelines. And inside here, we can save our timeline let's delete and keep main timeline save so we have our clean timeline created so far it's assuming that we want to work on the empty game object right so it's set up with a playable director and animator for us but we're not going to animate that empty object we just want to have a main timeline so we can work or bring in the stuff we want okay so let's delete this and then we can also delete this if we want to okay so we have a clean timeline to work with all right so we are good so if we go back to the scene we have our main timeline but as you can see the timeline is not set to the origin let's reset it and let's tag it yellow this allow us to know that this is the origin of our scene okay so if we get lost we know where stuff are the origin is around here all right cool so at this stage we can start creating our own tracks the one we'll be working on this course is mostly over here right the timeline so we're going to spend a lot of time over here we can click here 
and it will say create all kind of options at this time we want to create an animation track we can do it here right or we can right click here in the empty space and also grab animation track we can drag him in and it'll ask us what do we want to do if we bring in in a game object we have four options we can perform we can activate the object animate audio and then signal all right we will work on all of this but we need the animation track for the character right now so we got one and we are set okay so at this time if we select this character we have the track to animate the character here is the record button to start recording so if we don't have animation we want to move him around we can start doing our keyframes from this portion of it okay to bring in a clip we right click on the timeline any space around here on the track and we have options to add from animation clip then this pop-up if we have more characters in our scene it will be a lot of animations right and then we will know which animation we want or which character is using this run animation but from here we can read the character that is using this run animation it's the bike rider okay so obviously the rest of the clips are all for him because we only have him so that's how you would distinguish between what animation you are grabbing the clip who is it for okay so let's double click the run we have a run animation on the track okay don't worry about the helmet we will work on it okay we have to make it go with the character so we have a run animation on our timeline track which is for the character right so he can run and do his thing now the timeline is pretty simple we can zoom in with the scroll scroll mouse to get things bigger you know fine stuff with this bar here and as we are bringing in more clips you will see that this blue line here is jumping to the end of it you know it's controlling the end of our play with the more animations we are bringing in maybe we don't want that you know so if we come to the options on our timeline if we click here we have options now our timeline is set to frames we will be working on seconds so let's do that let's select seconds you'll see that the timing change we go back to the options we have duration duration is what was going on where if we bring in a clip the blue line will go to the end of the last clip right that is the duration mode we are in based on clips but we can base it on our fixed length we will do it we will set the length we want okay so we don't know yet so i think based on clip was good for us right now but this is the option you can also pick to set it yourself so let's leave it here at five seconds and if we go in the rest is basically something we can leave default the scroll mode and maybe frame rate is on 60 seconds let's go for 24 okay all right cool so we are set to go now let's look a little bit on the timeline as i move the run animation over the jump if you look here it's blending okay the jump animation is still there so it will play both the run and the jump okay so there will be a little blending so all these settings here like we can perform this blending we can shorten this clip make it shorter by dragging the end part of it we are still in what we are still in the mix mode over here see these bottoms are modes we can be in right now we are working 
inside the mix mode. We can go over clips, blend them, shrink and move them around. These are all mix mode. If we go to the next mode, which is what? Ripple mode. Okay. As I'm on mix mode, if I move the jump and shrink it little, you will see that the drive stay there. It don't move. All right. That means we are still under mixing. If we come to ripple mode, if I shrink the jump, the drive try to maintain the distance it was before. Okay. So ripple means it will move closer or it will move further as we are adjusting the ones next to it. Okay. Very cool. So basically, simple stuff all right the next is replace that means if i move the run animation over the jump any part it will cover it will cut it so if i move the jump it's very little now cut part of it and we are using all that space to cover for run animation so there are some little functionalities that will help you in your editing control z So guys, in the next class, we will start looking at the helmet, get a little set up and start working. All right. So I'll see you guys in the. Okay, guys, let's continue. Let's work on the helmet. Okay. Let's grab a scene view here. Let's zoom in on the helmet. So from here, we know where the hammer is right now. The hammer is over here. All right. It's inside the character, but it's not inside the rig. This is the master rig. So it's just part of the character. That's why it's behind. We want the head bone to control the helmet okay just like you will add a sword to the character you have to go inside the hand bone the bones can have a full control of the helmet so that's what we want right now so let's rename this helmet but we have to unfortunately break our prefab so so unpack prefab now we can rename the helmet. Okay. So we're going to go inside the master, root master, and look for the head bone. Spine. You see the head, but we don't want to drop it in right now as so let's get to where it's on T pose. All right. So literally let's um let's delete these animations real quick. So we get him on the T pose so we don't have to fight putting the helmet right in the head. It's very hard to do that. So we'll go back. The helmet is here. All we have to do is grab it, drop it inside the head bone. Boom. So at this point, the head bone is controlling the head and all the movement the helmet will go with it. So if you drop down, it's here. The helmet is here. Okay, cool. So we can get back to our setup. And bring in those back animations.
okay we still have to get a little details on the clips that's why i still have them around okay we're going to look at you know how we control the offset so if i on the run we can change the position the offsetting right and all that it's very important so we will look at it real quick so we have the hammer so you can see that as we play now the hammock follows the character that's what we want okay let's do a little setup let's bring in the bike okay so should i brought it where we had a t pose but we're good let's bring it inside with this angle because this is where the animation is going to start running from right like the one we had trying to copy so so let's bring in the bike. Can move it back. Come back on the timeline. At this level of the setup, where it's important is where the bike, the character is sitting on it. So let's be over here. Okay. So you can see that we still need to move the bike around to get a better setup, all right? So from the zoom, we can see the bike is shipped to the left. So let's move it in the middle a little bit. Look at the back. And from the back, you can see that it need a little rotation because of the animation you see is off. So we will have to get rotation in, still on the bike. Get rotation, to get to where we can grab the X axis. We want to rotate it that way a little bit, going this way. We time it, the fingers too, and we can we can check. It's not bad, so we can get a translate because we rotate a shift, the balance. So it's just a matter of matching stuff right now. Okay, you don't have to get perfect, perfect for the calls when you have a project an android game you know if you're going to zoom in on angles different angles you need to make things look better even for the better of it i want to show you another way you can check if you are satisfied and stuff right so at this point we can drag the bike inside the rider Boom. So the, the rider is containing the bike right now. If you select the rider, everything is selected. Let's go inside our project. And if we select the bike rider we brought in, we can switch the player here. Let's drop this rider with the bike inside the player. Okay. And let's blow it. Boom. So now you can see that. We have the bike in there and it's the same drive animation right so if we go in our animations and we select the drive you can see that it give us the chance to look at if it is sitting on it right which is cool right we can even blow it up bigger that is cool so we can tumble around it's not bad we need to ship to the left a little bit right and i wish unity the animation preview is the same view it's very easy to control and it's very so cool so so we get a closer look at things it's not bad so if we, we are satisfied, we can say 
when he's running, this setup is cool. Okay, we know the bike is sitting on the floor. So this is the floor thing. And, you know, Hammett is on it. We will animate the Hammett when he, let's, let's look here. We will, we will just leave it like this for, for now. Basically here, I remember it, it wasn't straight on the footer. It was like he's changing gears somewhere over here, something like that. So it's not everything that's supposed to go like we want sometimes some little gaps are okay. So we will leave it like this, but we get to get a very closer look, you know, with this, with this techniques, all right? You get very closer look at your object, and see the setup, all right? So this is where we made this stuff, direct modeling in Houdini, all right? So guys, it's, it's not bad, so we could go back and keep this setup okay so we have the bike in so what we need to bring in now is is the stripes and the metal effect so whilst we are still in the project folder let's drop the stripes too okay it comes in but they are all over so we could if you go in here these ones we don't need to match them crazy because they're gonna come in and the effect will happen real quick so we can match the stripes a little bit like that just grab the metal effect bring that when we are doing the actual revealing of the metal setup I mean the metal effect and stuff we will position them where we want but at this stage before we start the animating animations we want to match stuff a little bit okay so let me see if it's the whole thing it have to, to go this way a little bit okay that all right cool so we get in the setup and things in the right way okay they will come in like crazy we even want them to stick out a little bit okay for the metal effect we're still gonna blow it bigger we will get it bigger so it comes out of the bike so you will see the effect like i show you remember when when we review the bike the effect will be still showing and then if it goes a little bit then we will deactivate all the effects and then we will have the regular bike and the rider like right now i can just deactivate all the effects right cool so we will like the effect also inside the rider At this point if we are animating we are on the timeline and we are moving the character around it will move everything around very good right so control z to get it to where it was so basically at this point we have a setup we can start thinking about the animation so in the next class we will look at other Okay guys, welcome. Let's continue working. So there's been a little update on the environment. As you can see, I created a sphere for the sky and then a ground. The ground I used game object cylinder and the sky is a sphere, all right? So just to save us a little time, because I know you guys can handle that. So as you can see, the sphere is our sky now, and the cylinder, I scale it down for us to get, you know, a circle ground, all right? And our character is somewhere here. So basically, we are set. 
and I also created some materials for the ground and the sky. We're going to change them pretty soon because we are about to install the HDR pipeline. I was thinking we will wait for a while, maybe at the end part of it, but I don't want us work in a boring situation all the way to that part. You know, though it's going to drag us because it used a lot of power, you know, the HDR, the high definition, but we, we will manage it like that because we, we want it to be fun as we are going. So we will go ahead and install the HDR package in this class. Okay, guys, I want to also show you something here at the access store, but I just find out that it's been depreciated that means it's no more at asset store and what that is is unity measured material library okay this is coming from my assets that i've already downloaded okay so it's telling me it's being depreciated and it's also saying it over here that it's being moved is being moved to where to github okay so you guys gonna need to go to github technologies and then measured material library you need to download because they have two versions you need to download the hdrp that is the one we're going to use and there's one for the universal pipeline okay so go for the high definition one. So it's at github.com, Unity Technologies, Measured Materials. So let's go ahead, let's install Package Manager. So when all the packages load up, you scroll down, and you see we have high definition render pipeline. So it takes a little while and then it will finish the installation. Okay, at this point, if you don't want it, you can remove it, okay? And right away, you see we have some arrows here. So let's look at what is going on. So if we click here, and we look at the arrow, it's referring us to the package, Cinemachine post-processing, Cinemachine forum settings, okay? type of namespace hdp pipeline does not exist in the namespace unity blah 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 so it's a namespace issue right here right so how do we fix it let's go look for the volume settings it's talking about so we have to go to post processing so if we come here into the project and under the packages, and Cinemachine, Cinemachine, Runtime, Post Processing, right here. There's two files in here. So which one is talking about? It's talking about volume settings. So this one is the volume settings right here, the, the second one. So let's open the Okay, so when you come to the namespace up here the unity dot experimental rendering 
high definition pipeline. So the, the issue is here. It's still referring to these settings as experimental, but it's no more experimental, right? So it's coming from the cinema machine. The cinema machine is referring to the high definition because it's working with it, right? And it's referring to the high definition as an experimental pipeline. So all we have to do is we will take the experimental out and then rename this to, instead of HDP pipeline, we make it high definition okay so it's rendering that high definition so this is how cinema machine have to refer to this namespace okay so let's save that then come out to unity let's clear it's still referring to another post-processing file. Okay, this time is the volume settings editor. Okay, so let's go look for that. So, so volume settings editor. So this is the one it's referring to. So we right click and we open see the same issue so we probably can just copy this whole namespace using right using unity copy go back to this one and paste that's it so let's save this one too so the problem is the namespace so if you have that issue this is where you come. So we clear, we close the console. So pretty much we have a high definition. Okay guys, welcome. Let's continue working. So we have our high definition installed. And if we come into the project, it will be under the packages, right? I have also installed the measured material, which you have to go in and grab it from Unity GitHub, right? So after you install it, you will be set. So we still have the old system running, okay? The high definition haven't kicked in yet. So we have to go edit project settings and here under the graphics you see we have scriptable render pipeline asset so this is what the system the graphics system need to kick in the high definition for us right now so if we don't have the measured material we have to create our own but if we click here We see we have high definition render pipeline assets. We can use that right now, but let me show you. If you don't have a high definition pipeline asset and you right click in your project, okay? You come to create under rendering, then you create a new high definition render pipeline, okay? So we're going to use the measured render pipeline asset. So if we come here and we come to volume settings, this is how the render pipeline asset look like. This is what you need for the system to kick in. So as soon as we add it to the graphics, you will see that we will lose all these materials we have created. Everything will turn into pink. That means we have to read do and set up 
our materials again okay so let's do that and use the measured materials pipeline we can close the dialog and you can see the system cannot render the materials we have so we have to go into for our ground material let's use high definition let's use lit but we have to put in the texture so we scroll down to the lit material you see under the surface input we can go inside our textures and drop our ground material there you go so we have that and also we can work on the character the basic one we have if you notice all these changes we're making we still have issue here in the scene what's going on is we are still working inside the scene view with a sprite mask okay you see game is okay but scene is still under sprite max so we have to change it to shade see okay so we can also work on the hermit materials let's clear all the warnings after we install and make all these changes okay guys so to work on the hermit if we click on it you see that the materials we cannot change it from here okay it's embedded to the character as it came in from the fbx so if we select the material from here you see it's linked to the character so it, it will be good to create your own material at this point okay so let's go to the materials let's create so we can come in select the ear part and drop the material into the slot okay so right away we have a new material over there so at this point it comes in with hdr lit automatically because now from now any material we will create will be a hdr lit material okay so if we drop that we come into the material texture portion of it go to hermit this is the ear one the first one we drop that in there okay for the rest of the hermit we will use the material we will use for the bike for it okay so it matches the bike and stuff all right so that is what we will do Okay guys, welcome. Let's continue working. Under packages, we have our high definition installed. And in the access, we have measured materials library. Okay. But still, our scene is dark. It's not looking good at all. So we still have to go some process before we can get a better lighting for our views. Okay. Let's create a 
VFX folder and inside here let's create volume profile let's name it V underscore one post processing profile pro underscore one so we have our volume and our post processing okay and that a camera let's add post process layer okay let's leave everything on default over there and in here in our scene let's create an empty object let's rename that to volume let's add a volume so search for volume v and inside our volume we need a profile okay so the profile is the one that's going to hold the environment the bloom the lights you know and all the cool stuff right so let's bring in the volume okay and right away you see the volume don't have no profile overrides you come to here add override sky hdr sky let's select all let's add one more bloom Let's try one more exposure. Check all. Let's go back to Bloom and check all. We can we can drop some of them out as we need. All right. So this is all in a setup mode. All right. So the process is. You create an empty object to hold the volumes okay the volume can be anywhere in the scene the camera have a post process layer that will control all these volumes and the post processing objects we will create but for now we just need the volume to work for our scene so if we go back to the volume here and in the sky session if we drop it down you see there's no sky so let's go see if we have sky we have studio small this is coming from the measured materials okay so let's use studio sky okay let's close this and under the volume let's add static light script okay so add components close the last search and start typing xt for static lightning sky okay it says go to lightning window for addition so it's telling us to do something so where do we go for lightning window we come up here and rendering lightning settings so under the environment hdrp is asking for a profile so we have to give it our volume okay remember we name our volume v1 and then under the static lightning sky 
we're going to use the HDRI sky okay there you go so it's kind of a little process but very simple when you do it one or two times you will grab it okay guys so think about it like you are setting the environment light and where do you go for environment rendering and lightning settings so this is where the whole setup is right so the environment we need a high definition render pipeline environment to kick in right after you get a volume which will control the the stuff you want the, the sky to have you know so it's containing it over here on an empty object right and then you know it's going to be reflecting from the sky environment so we will use the hdr sky you see none and then hdr sky so you see the difference it makes a lot of difference and then you can go in you know these are like when you want to bake your textures and stuff but we are not doing all that stuff all right so what we are doing will work fine for us for this course so at this point you can go in to the volume and drop it down because we still have we can add more overwrites okay you can add more it says a lot of stuff to add go to lightning you can add all kind of stuff you know to make you can even add different skies visual environment post-processing like all kind of stuff right lens distortion frame grain depth of field color curves color adjustment so basically it's like you are working you know on an editing field on the movie clip right you can add all kind of stuff tone map and all that stuff but we just need this the hdr sky the bloom if you drop that we have all we can check the intensity see it's crazy high over now so we can bring it down we can taint it if we want to see we can taint how it's looking so this is like we are working after we have get everything that is when you go in and try to get your scene to look good right so we will leave it at this point just now that is how you will go in and you start making all kind of cool changes to your scene all right guys so so that's it and you got exposure you can come in and intensify stuff see as you want all right if you want it to be brighter like that but let's go for something reasonable we can come we can come back in and make changes if we want to okay so at this point if we go to the to the rider and we turn on our bike and we go to timeline can bring in drive clip See? so if I'm in the scene in the next class we will work on the bike we will try to find some some car paint material for it from the materials that came from measured material library okay measured materials and then material let's go into aluminium see how the aluminum is looking right now let's try a couple of them and see maybe we'll find one we like a 
okay so you see how our aluminium is coming it's, it's, it's kind of like dark let's check the body paint let's put this one on okay what this is telling you is even though it looks okay I'm not satisfied with this let's go look at those samples all right then we, I will talk to you about what's going on so if we go to the to the samples and all materials we can save our scene so we come back to the same scene save so you see even from far you can see the crumbs and you can distinguish from the black and the white crumbs or the silver crumbs right so the colors are you know are what they are so if I zoom in you can see the reality in it right so how do you achieve that all right so normally you know as as an individual person working on all of your project by yourself you will rush and keep going with what we saw in our scene but this is what the chrome is supposed to be looking even this is the scratch chrome okay and it's still looking better you see all the distinguish between the materials you see we couldn't get a silver chrome like this in our scene so why you see this chrome and this chrome you can tell the difference you know and it's not magic it's just that there is a way you have to do it okay you see the colors are very nice and each one you can tell and you can find them in reality like you know you can see some toys some cars you know what i mean with these colors right so how do you get it okay that's why in the game studios they will hire somebody that will sit, sit down have all the time and set up the environment okay in our scene we only have one light but this is the scene this is the scene here if i drop it it have the volume we have the volume setting post process we didn't put one in our scene but that is not it because because even here we can turn the post process off and it still be the same so the effects are coming from the volume and the lights okay look at how many lights it has point lights but each one of them you have to place them right because you can bring one in and it will mess up the whole thing so you have to place them right and give them the right you know amount of range and stuff you see the numbers you see this is by default this is not the default number and here there are some options and this is the one they pick all right so somebody have sit down and waste a lot of time setting all this up and as he's tweaking little and little he's looking at the materials to see how they are looking right so you spend that much time it's just the lights there's not even a refreshing probe in this scene and see how good it is right so in this case for you learning you have to study how they build this one all right when you have free time but for our course and what the way we want to move on with all the stuff in front of us how do we get something like this see how do we get our scene to look like this our scene we have camera we have volume we have all and this the same setup is what we have but still we wasn't getting the right stuff so i'm about to show you a trick to get our scene also better all right so very simple let's go to the project we are already here
and inside our stuff, our project, let's create another folder. Let's name it profile. So inside our profile, we're going to do something small. That's all we have to do. We're going to come in. We have a camera in our scene, right, in our project. We can leave the camera because the camera have the same thing we added. Remember, we just added the post-process layer. And everything is default like here, you know. So we can leave the camera, but let's take everything. Maybe take the camera, we will take all the lights, see? Because we don't have time to, to set all these points like, so it's just placing the lights, right? And then the post-processing, like I said, I can turn all of them off right now, you see? And it, it didn't, it's, it's not using that at all. There's no changes right now. But we will, we will take them. We will keep as it is and keep the process volume. The, the one that is working is the volume settings. Okay? So if I turn the volume settings off, you see changes right away. Okay? So, so how do we take this stuff to our scene? Simple. We're going to drop the whole scene. The, all we need is the scene. We drop it here in our profile. It will turn into a profile. Boom. Okay, that's it. So what we do next, as long as it's in our profile folder, is there. Okay. So we can save this scene or we can leave it and go back to the scenes and go look for our scene. Okay, double click on it. Don't save. Okay, we get our scene back. And pretty much it's, it's the same. You see how flat our chrome is black, how flat the the car paint is, you know. So the same camera settings here right so we will turn our camera off eventually we will delete that but now let's turn it off because there's no camera that's why it's going let's turn our directional light off because we only have one light and what is our volume the volume is the one that contains our volume settings so let's turn that off Okay, everything so we have just the basic high definition installation without any effects or environmental setup so what do we do we go into our prefabs drop this prefab recreated boom so right away what do you see look at our Chrome and the car paint look into the scene very nice right See, look at how how nice the chrome is looking it's just like you know the sample scene so that is what is going on it's just the lights okay it's just the lights that you have to set them up the points light so in my last example i have a couple of lights in there just like this but I just wanted us to go through this scenario so that, you know, if you don't know this stuff and you're thinking most of the time why you don't get your stuff looking, most of the time you need to place the lights right, 
the lights have to be at the right places and so that is how you get it but the thing is for our scene the lights are just around here okay so if the bike is driving around and we are capturing from here it will be probably darker or a different shade for our bike so how do we get this light with our bike very simple because the lights because the lights come as separate in their own container we can put that in our bike or in our rider so anytime they are driving around the lights are with them okay eventually we will add one light for for headlights you know when he's driving around so we still have a lot to do but this is the initial setup you know because this calls the look and how you get things nice in unity is part of it so in the next class probably by the time we come back i'll complete all this you know materials and stuff right i'll probably do that and then thanks guys i'll see you in the next class from the last class we looked at the measured material library and i have completed putting some of the materials on the bike so at this point we can focus on the animations okay so we're going to have a little obstacles if we just animate like this okay because if i select the bike we see that the bikes transform or the pivot here is over here if i go for center it's still up here At some point he's going to raise the front tie up like he's going to raise the front bike up right so the back here is going to go under the ground because we need to figure where our pivot is going to be to help us to get that work right our pivot is supposed to be here okay so just as it is right now let's rotate and you guys will see what i'm talking about so if i rotate the x axis you see this is how he will raise the front of the bike at a certain point but look how it's going down the ground okay well you could work with this if we're going to combine the x axis here and the y okay but most of the time it's not smooth you will see that at a certain point in the keyframes the bike will be up or down too much so we need to have like a smooth rotation like this and still have the back of the bike on the ground okay so let's put zero here to go back so we have to figure how we will get a pivot to come over here okay so that is something we have to have in mind all right because that will help us to make the rotation the front up work better for us so um at this point we can create an empty object to serve as our pivot around this area okay so right click on the character create an empty game object rename it to bike rider okay so if we go back to the scene and we click on our new pivot holder you see it's just at the same place as the bike itself okay at this point we can shift the pivot the placeholder to this area okay let's shift the z to write about there is fine and you look at the back you see it's in the middle so that will work fine so that is how 
you will get it so at this point we're not going to worry about that right now it's inside so it will keep it inside and then when we finish our animation at a certain point we need it we will bring it out from the bike and we will use it okay so let's rename it to something else like let's add one to it now let's start our blocking out our basic animations right like he jump out and then he goes forward and comes down all right so let's start blocking that before we do that let's create animation track let's drop in the character okay so he's gonna go forward with everything right now we just have to turn them off and right now he's at the driving clip or the animation let's go to the beginning and let's turn the bike off main bike off we will let them active when we are ready for them okay so now we have a track containing the character but let's get a better view we don't have cameras yet we will work on those all right but for now let's go to the camera and control shift f that give us this view we capture that view all right so how do we get our animation going on we have to arm our track or set the recording on so this will allow us to record our keys all the keys we will have will be recorded and how do you get a keys when you select the bike and we are on the translation we're going to use the z okay any movement either on the x y or the z will set a fresh key for us and if we look here everything is zero so at the beginning frame one we are also working in seconds so at frame one we're going to set on the z a key so we say like one and go back to zero like how it was right but then we have a key there okay so in this case we have to figure how we will move him forward because our animation is not too long for the for the running animation right so at the point where he get his anticipation to jump we will move him forward okay so let's move him forward to about here okay so select him all this time any movement will be recording or set keyframes right so we can go back here and move him forward to about there or maybe back a little bit so so we blocking it out okay so around maybe here when he get this pose like he's sitting on the bike we will move him forward but not too far like we did before just around here will be fine just a little forward okay so we'll do the same okay right about there is fine and then this key we just created that is when he jumped up he was here so from here to here where he is right now he will be revealing the effect okay this is where we will set the effect to come out so at this point the effect will be out and the bike will also be out and then he will start coming down okay but if we drop down with the y axis because y is that down axis right if we use that right now he will come down vertical which we don't want so we have to still move him forward a little bit so we need another key so you plug it about four keys so we will be at two seconds okay and we'll move him to here all right you see sometimes you can use the grid to guide you because he was here you move him to here then here and here that means you are not getting too far right so we know we are within some areas right okay cool so let's move him to around here okay 
at two seconds. Okay, cool. So at this point, we can we can test how far he is right now. What we have. So he start running. He jumps and he moves forward. Cool. So we want something like that. Okay, we want some basic stuff like that. Don't worry about the game view. When we start working on the cameras, we will track him and get better shot on him. Okay. So at this point, we have to block things out, okay? So if we scrub and see how it's going, you got the animation running, he jumps. Roughly from here, we will start revealing the animation or the effects. Okay? So now we can turn off the recordings. So how do you edit stuff after you have key stuff like this? So the old animation timeline is still out there. All of this timeline animations we are creating is coming from here. So the new timeline is built upon here, which means they still work together. It's like we are still working with the old animation track. These keys that we have, we can turn it to a clip like this. We right click and we say convert to a clip track. You see? So we have that at this point, we can move it around, you know, edit it, cut it and all that stuff, just like we would do to the regular clips, but we want to work on it more. So let's edit undo. Okay. So if we double click on it, it will take us to the old timeline. You see all the keys that we have and the new timeline is still here over here we have the power to move keys around it's a matter of selecting them and moving them around we can go inside the curves and make some fine tunings so we have the power all right to, to make all kind of changes so in the next class we will start revealing the effect in, in no time we find out that you know it's all coming together okay there you go so i'll see you in the next okay guys welcome in the last class we blocked out our key animation for the initial part of it we are moving that that's how it, it goes little and little you see that it comes out nice but what i want us to do before we move on in this class is to get some camera to look at this guy okay so basically you know this course is about these effects and the camera and the cutscene right so we definitely need to start working on our cine machine right so if i close here and i open the scene we have this camera the main camera we brought from the measured material that's the camera we are using so I have to close down and get some space here. So what we need to get started using the cine machine is we are going to work on the cameras if we're working with the cine machine. So the first thing to do is to tell the camera in your game or your project, where is the cine machine? See, so the first thing is to tell the camera, where is the cine machine? So to do that, you have to add what is called Cine Machine Brain. So let's close our last search and start typing Brain, B. So we see we have Cine Machine Brain, okay? So if we do that, now we have the brain that the camera need to control all the Cine Machine cameras okay it's just simple as that so we have the cine machine brain attached to our camera okay so the staff here we can leave them as default right now okay we just need a brain this will tell the camera what to do so we need a track 
you know everything is still happening in here at a timeline so we right click in an empty space and here we have cine machine track we can create that this is going to hold all of our cameras it's just the same as our rider animation clips see so each one is like a camera and each one is doing a different action this is a run this is a jump this is a drive so you can have probably the same set of cameras to tr tackle each one of them you can have a run camera a jump camera and a drive camera but we're not going to have a lot of cameras because this is just to show you what's going on if you have like all crowded scene and you are working on some really cool project then you can have more cameras so we don't want to like spend time tweaking the cameras the cameras take time to set them up because they have a lot of options all right so we, we will see it so basically we have the cinema machine shot track created okay but that also is asking us for something what is it it's asking us for cinema machine brain you see it's asking us because we probably have more cameras in our scene though we have one sometimes you could have more and you have to know which one of them contains the brain you want to use okay you can have more cameras containing cinema machine brain but still you have to tell the track which one he's using so we bring in our camera and we drop it okay so now we have camera set for the cinema machine shot track okay so basically that is the setup the next is where is the cameras okay before we get a camera we have to get a clip to hold the camera on our shot so we have to create that we can create cameras way ahead if we want to that's not like you have to do this one before this one but the one you have to do before you get things working is to get the camera brain so at this point we can create here we come up here you say add cine machine shot you can create a shot on the track okay so it give us the default length okay and the default length we can shorten it we can stretch it okay so the space is occupied will determine that camera is gonna shut all that length of the timeline okay if we shorten it to the length of the run animation right after the run the jump if there is no more shot it will still use this camera okay so let's do that let's hold our first camera around here okay but because we still want to work on the animation we're going to keep one camera for now and we will add them as we are getting comfortable with the animations all right so we just want to look at it for now okay so where is the camera you come up here and you say create virtual camera boom okay our virtual camera comes in most of the time i will create an empty object to hold it okay so i will name this like virtual cameras and we can drop the one we just created inside it okay cool because when we get more we can just close them for space now this is our first virtual camera and now look here if you see it's a lot of options going on you know the top part here the top part here it's like our camera we had before you know but this is where the tracking stuff happening you have to tell the virtual camera we have created what object in your scene is going to follow 
is going to follow or what object in your scene is going to look at so that is the whole principle you know normally you have one camera in the scene if you want it to follow something you have to write a follow script remember that you 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 write a follow script for it in a gameplay we still use follow script sometimes right or you know basically in the gameplay you use follow script you can use cine machine in gameplay to take advantage of all these camera stuff because this course is just about the cine machine cut scene we are not inside the gameplay the gameplay will go on the player will play and there will be a trigger that will tell the player that to go look at this cutscene we are about to create okay that is what a cutscene mostly is used some cutscene can be part of the gameplay you know whilst you are playing you you click something and you want to buy something there will be like a little play inside the store so it's kind of a creative ideas that you can add to your gameplay right so this is like you know the game stop and we will play this animation the effects and stuff so this part hold the setup the follow object and the look at object now you see it's very simple the follow means the object we place in it will follow it okay and and the look at means the camera will stay at one place and looking at the object we give it so if we look down here this is how it's breakdown it's breakdown into body and aim like two parts okay the body is the transposer and if we read here transposer requires a follow target change body to do nothing if you don't want a follow target say if we don't want to have the camera to follow anything we have to change it to do nothing right here but we will keep it at transposer okay we might want it to follow our object there are so many options and they are like self-explanatory if we come here we look at this one this one say lock to target this one say lock to target no row lock to target with word app okay and this is word space so these are all options and as you get in and you are working on your project you start changing them you see how each one of them is doing to your your view or your shot okay so it's a matter of experimenting all these options so we would just like stick to one and then when you have free time you can switch them and see what's going on okay so the body part will control how the following x and the aim part will control how the camera is looking at the object so if we give it an aim to look at the functionalities are coming from the aim sessions here okay so it can track the object offset see tracking the object offset the way it's looking at it and screen and screen x and screen y so these are all set up so we're not going to like really get in, into it like deep 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 but that's all it's very simple take it as the two parts the body for the follow the aim to look at so at this point we want our camera to look at him okay so the space is here the strat are here so we grab the object we want the camera to look at and drop it in boom see how it's looking at it and we can see from from our scene how the camera is looking and it's right because the camera is here and it's looking directly to the to the object the same thing here so the camera is like right here and it's looking at him so you can manually come in and move stuff around if you want to okay but that is not 
the only control. The controls are here. Most of the time I use in the scene, but the controls are here. Okay. So, I mean, we are looking at it, right? So we can have the Y of the screen how we want it. We can make the Y go down or up. See, we have that control. We can shift the screen space. X, go this way, back and forth. So very simple. And as you are tweaking, the camera also respond to that. And the Z, okay. And there's one options at the base here where you turn on, you can have a screen guide to guide you to see what's going on. Okay. And the guide is like the frame, save frame. Okay. You want to make sure your objects are within the right spot. You can control them it's still from here. We have the the X, the Y, you know, so you have that control. So basically, these are all options for you to like, you know, depending on how your shot is, because if I set something up right now, you're probably not going to use that ever in your, in your project because your project is going to be different. So you get to understand what is going on. And it's very simple. This top part controls you know what you are giving it to it and it's pretty much like our old camera the field of view clipping and all that stuff so basic stuff then the new stuff is the body for following we will look at it when we start following stuff control shift f see now we can grab some more better okay so you see the same the if you look at the save frame the angle, the red lines, it's more down here and it's little up here. That's why it's little over there. You see, it's like he's not really in in the right. So at this point, you can come in and use the the screen, the Y to bring him down. Okay and use the bias to give some more room for the app okay so your camera is looking at it better, better. all right guys so that is how you mess with the camera it's like so many tweaking but that's what it is it's the same as you know working on your own camera you have to standing all kind of angles to get a better shot all right so we can turn off our guide now and in the next class continue animating but at this time we have a little look at right so if we play we see what's going on in there too all right so we can see something going on in our gameplay that's cool all right so i'll see you Okay, guys welcome so you probably say okay so many cameras so why we are using the virtual camera the truth is almost all of the cameras contain virtual camera okay so the free look contain three virtual cameras so it allow you to look at the top the middle and the bottom the free look camera have three sessions. It have, let me start closing down so we get more space. It have middle, it have bottom, and it have top. Okay, so three cameras. See, each one contain body and aim. Remember how we look at the aims from our virtual camera? So the three sessions contains same virtual camera and up here is where you can have access controls you know with the input 
our type of shot we don't need this camera this camera is mostly for game in play you know where you want the player at a certain point get closer look at certain angles of certain things but the whole idea is is still containing virtual camera right so this is something you can try you can create it if we look into the scene we don't see the rig i'm talking about the the top the middle and the bottom but if we drop in a look and the follow objects it will bring that rig so if i drop in see right away you see the top rig for the camera to go around here and look around stuff in the middle and the bottom so that is the free look it contains three virtual cameras and it's operated by like inputs like the mouse and stuff like that now if you're using the virtual free look camera in a scene like what we are working on a cut scene where the player don't have control of what is going on it's just everything is stopped in play and only the cameras and the shot is operating and you want your free look to still work in here we can write a script and tell you know at certain times in our timeline where the camera should go maybe at the top at the middle the bottom all right so we have that power for the to use this camera but the thing is our shot is very simple and continuous driving around so we are not too interested in that but if you still interested in the event stuff we're going to use what is called signals okay we will have our signal tracks so we can have events stuff happening and all kind of stuff time markers and stuff like that it's kind of the same so the rest of the stuff are basically like event stuff like if we look at state driven cameras it's like if we use it here we can say okay if it is playing the jump animation then show this camera okay so it's like um event all right so they are all kind of similar and then the blending list it will blend a bunch of virtual cameras same as the clear shot if we create clear shot and we look at it it contains what virtual camera so basically so understanding the virtual camera obviously you are kind of like into all of them then you have to use them depending on your situation right so let's delete these cameras the only thing that is different is the dolly track so you have to create a dolly track and then you animate the camera on it and the camera is still the same you know virtual camera inside so it's not too much going on but it's complex so you need more time to try each one of them because you know if we having just a course for cinema machine it will take our time try each one of them but since this course is mostly related to to cinema machine cut scene i want you guys to get that brief understanding of it so that you can try them as you are creating this shot and like i said when you get understanding of the virtual camera we are working on it's pretty much you know the same all right so we will move on so from now on we will just continue animating around until we get back later to the cameras if we want to or if we have to okay okay cool so he runs he jumps So at this point, if I get off from the camera, we can say maybe just one frame ahead, two, we can start revealing stuff. So let's go into the character, open the stripes, okay? 
But what I want to do now is let's get a full position where he is fully sitting down on the bike. Okay, so we can line up things and then we will start going back and revealing them because now they are all over in the different places. All right, so let's turn the bike to on. Okay, see where they are right now. For us to move them at the same time, we can drop the strips or the stripes. We can drop the stripes inside the bike. So now if we move the bike up, we are getting both of them at the same time. Okay. I can move a little smoother. Okay. Maybe zoom in. At the top here, we can get it roughly, but you don't want to like leave it so obvious that it's now matching. You have to. So what I would do is I would turn off the stripes temporary now. Okay. So we see how the matching of the bike is because the stripes will come in quick and go. So move up. You see how we are working? It's like you are planning it and then you start working it slow at a time. You see? So you get an idea. It's just like you are letting it happen. Okay? So move the bike up. Okay, roughly over there is fine. Okay? Maybe we can say... Let it go up some more, maybe eight, maybe, yeah. So you see, it jumped to a better lining up. So if I click here, see roughly he's sitting on it, okay? So what we can do now is to, is to also turn on the stripes. The stripes, we are not worried too much. See, so we have it here. At this stage, we can say the bike is at the right place. What we can do now is to have an activation track for the bike. But let's do that later. Let's just turn it off. Let's bring out the stripes out from the bike. Okay. Let it roll up to where you want to drop it out. So let's bring it out from the from the bike. Still inside the rider. Okay. So the bike is separate. The stripe is separate. Now. So let's turn the bike off. Okay. So we have only the stripes or the effects. So the effect tool, we will start animating the middle one and then the individual stripes the glow ones will start coming in too so we have this major setup okay so in the next class we will start animating revealing all this okay guys welcome this is where we left last time so let's make some room because we are about to get crowded pretty soon all right so so at this point we can go inside the stripes so let me turn all of this off so we have the metal effect and for the metal effect we want it to start revealing let me turn that off right now we want it to restart revealing right between the hands like over there like where the gizmo is right now see something over there like that but we will have an issue with a pivot because if we turn on the stripes so this is a setup i have for it this is the main object right but you see where 
the pivot is all right if i bring it to center it's still around here we don't want the effect start opening around this area we want it to happen in the hands area like i show you so to get the pivot to be around the hands area i created this empty object to hold the middle effect so this empty object pivot is around this area okay so we can have things coming out from this area for us better okay so if i go to pivot and i select this one you see it's around here that is where we want staff to start animating so let's do that let's go in select the metal effect give it a track animation track okay and drop in drop in metal effect so we have that in so if we select metal effect we arm our track we come to zero all the way from the beginning when he's running we don't want to see no effects right like we see it right now we don't want that so we have to give it a key so here to give it a key you have to select the object and start giving the scale a value so let's go for like zero 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 So at the beginning at one we want it to be zero and then when he jump and we find the position where we, we think that is where we want to see that effect we will do something there too so let's find that spot so right there okay right there we will start showing stuff we will give it zero here because we don't want it to start from beginning coming and revealing so at this point we can give it another zero let's give it one 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 and go back to zero 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 because we don't want it to happen there zero just want it to have a key let's go so from this point, if we go, the further we go, it will start revealing to that point. So let's go to where we would think the revealing should stop. So right after he get a full posture, revealing should stop. So here we can give it one back. Full set. All this scale axis right so you can see the effect happens real quick and it's happening from the hands so it's like he holds the actual tron legacy effect he holds something and he stretch the hands and he start revealing the bike that's the whole trick we are trying to create so if we have time we can create a bar for him all right see so you see that something happening but you don't see it's the bike so that means at this stage let's delete the drive animation it will distract x for now so delete so he will still be at the top even though we, we, we come this far all right okay cool so let's see how quick the animation reveals it's not bad because that's how it's happening we can we can let it finish revealing roughly probably at this end okay or maybe here because it comes too quick for me so what we can do 
is we can go into the track and go to the job sheet this is where it start coming so we can shift the last keys back to give it more room so just a matter of trying them to see see so it will start coming little and little all this time it's coming and then it get bigger so you you kind of have some time to see the animation or the effect happening right so we don't want it we want it to happen quicker because he don't stay too long in the air but we also want to see there's some effects going on if it happened too quick we won't see that there's something going on all right so let's play it real quick yeah it's now back one more all right so you have to plan it okay so maybe at this point we can reveal the bike so let's do that to make it nicer so we can set activation track for the bike okay and the activation track is pretty much like the shot track so whenever all the areas that the activation clip is covering it will show whatever object you give it so now we want to reveal the bike so if we put the bike in activation turn it on edit undo you see the bike is turned off you see here it's off but as soon as i drop it in here the activation will turn it on so that is the work of the activation it will turn whatever object is off on okay but where do we want it to start showing it's from the beginning coming we don't want it to show we want it to show at this point where we are right now okay so you see beginning is off he's running with no nothing showing he's running he's coming he got that effect it's showing it's showing and then the bike comes in cool right so at this stage he will be getting ready to come down all right so all this time going we want the bike to stay active okay so anytime we increase the timeline we have to also increase the bike activation track okay so very cool and also increase the cameras you are using so we can go back because we don't want to play too long for just testing so that's why we keep it short we will increase the timeline okay cool so we go back to the scene we have the bike comes in but the initial the initial effect we only see the metal effect right what about the other stripes you can activate some of them to make it look better so as he's coming boom right after here right at this point right at this point where the metal main effect is coming we can show the big stripes you can start showing the big stripe to make it crowded you don't want to have just this little effect alone coming so we can add another track animation track okay go inside the stripes now they are here it's not inside the middle one these ones maybe we can activate the big one let's look at that see see it makes it make it looks like something going on but you still don't see the bike okay so let's get that one activated or maybe let's turn it off let's see maybe the smaller one uh, let's get a big one like it get a full bike frame but it's not happening yet and then we'll start bringing these ones too so let's get a bigger one bigger one on see we see something going on 
and then turn the small one off okay you don't want them to happen at the same time just small intervals that will give that illusion so over here if in this big one we don't have to animate the scale we can just activate them all right we can just activate them for them to come in and show themselves right and that's coming in slow and scaling all right so let's delete the animation track and give them activation track that that will even make it quicker for us so at this stage we will activate what the big stripe okay and drop it in boom okay so from beginning it's off it's coming it's off boom small ones that a big one comes in and then it's going see so you see stuff happening so if we track it much better this angle see see and the bias comes in so all of them is happening quick at the same area so it's just a matter of adding the rest of the stripes in so i'll do that real quick so you see we have we have them coming in like that so let's play real quick so in the next class we will continue guys Okay, guys welcome let's continue on working okay at this point we can bring the bike down okay we'll make space for our timeline in a minute so let's see what we have to do before we bring the bike down we're gonna bring our temporary pivot holder down so let's take out from the bike okay our animation ends here Let's select our track and set the recording back on. We are about to bring it down. So we have to select our main bike and use the Y axis to bring it down. You can see that it went too much down because you want it to go down a little bit so that it's not like it's floating or anything but maybe 1.95 yeah that that is better so it goes down a little bit but not too deep and not floating either so at this point it landed it came down right so it's on the ground right now so if we move back see and if we can you see how it's coming down so that angle is what I was talking about earlier we want the bike come down like that okay so let's start from beginning and test it boom so it's kind of quick but that's how it is we can slow things down from our keys that we set all right we will go forward a little bit before he raise the front right because when he lands he will drive on the ground for a little bit and then he will raise 
the bike. So before he raised the bike, we will deactivate all the effects. We will turn them off. Okay. So we're going to have to animate him forward some more. So we will move for a few more frames. We will select him back again. But if we're going to go forward again, then we should put our pivot back in so that it goes with it to the point where we will need it. So let's put it back in. Okay, when I put it back in, it set a key, you know, because it's listening for anything we would do, it will record. So we have to turn record off and put it back in. Okay, now we could turn on our record, you see. So you have to watch on all that stuff. Anything you do, even if you switch, you can switch objects and it will still record. Okay, what we can do now is drag him forward a little bit before he raised the bike. So let's select the whole thing and we'll go about this far. We can go some more. Okay, like about there. All right, cool. Let's deactivate the effect right now. Let's turn off the effect right after he lands. And he move about there. We can turn off the effect because he, he's about to raise the front up. Okay. So how do we turn the effect? Very simple. At where playhead X, we can look for all the effects. Okay. So the big stripes, we can shorten it. Boom. The medium, shorten it. So, it, so at this point, the play past that area, they will they will turn off. We have to set one for the middle effect. So let's get some space and activation track. Go inside the bike stripes and drop this metal effect in okay coming from the beginning right it's being controlled by the scaling so we have to deactivate it from this side by turning it this way off right you see so right at the edge of it is gone so playing from here going we will have just our bike okay and if we st we extend our timeline we have to extend the bike activation to continue showing okay so pretty much we are set so let's look at see the metal effect everything is showing until they pass the the activation line cool so now we can start thinking about raising the front okay he lands he drive forward a little bit that drive forward a little bit when we set things up we will make that go a little faster by tightening in the gap okay so let's get some more space so that we see things what's going on okay so eventually soon we will have some more cameras coming in okay so we see our temporary pivot holder at the back of the tire. So this will allow us to able to rotate the bike like we want and not going inside the ground. So let's try that. So how do we do that? Because we are still animating this track. So we are about to switch that. Okay. So we will put our main bike, select everything and put it inside and put it inside our pivot holder okay so now if i select the bike 
you see where the pivot is is over here but if i select our pivot holder boom it's, it's over at the end of the bike that's what we want and if we test and it have clean rotation and everything so if we switch to rotation and we rotate the x axis up you see very cool so we are able to rotate the front of the bike up and it's still floating right on the ground it's not going deep inside the ground so this is what we want very cool all right so he lift the front of the bike very cool so so how do we get to animate that okay but now they have been controlled with our new pivot okay so if we close it we have bike rider inside the original one and we have our new one. okay so how do we start animating let's get it back to zero okay and start planning and set it up in the next class we will set a track for it start animating the rotation raise the front and move him around a little bit okay so when we move him just a few around we will set another camera okay that's what we will do in the next class so we will end this class and i will see you in the next class Okay guys welcome from the last class we talk about our pivot system and we have a temporary holder for us right so we know now if we are able to set it up right we can get the face to go up and the back tie will not go inside the ground right so let's set up our scene let's clean the track a little bit the timeline because it's kind of crowded come up here create track group select all the effects maybe from here to here hold shift and drop them onto the track group this time we can collapse it okay got some more space here and also if we play from the beginning we see that from our view the end part he go a little deeper in there you know set it up a little bit so that we see him come from here so let's let's do it like this the feather he is from the camera right now we we can get the bike ending over here something like that so let's try this real quick control shift f he's a little further away right see so we see the end part a little bit so it's kind of like we see the end like you know same view okay cool so the problem we have is we need to implement other techniques okay so in in games in movies most of the scenarios they do they switch the characters they switch the objects okay the problem we have is if we now decide to drop because he's at the time we need to start rotating the front of the bike right so if i go back a little bit here he's supposed to start raising the bike if we do now set it up drop our rider the main bike now into the pivot and we give it a track there's going to be a conflict so if i give this new pivot which allow us to have a pivot at the back here okay at the tie if we start animating that give it animation track you see we don't see the bike the bike jump forward you see it's stuff about animation and transform and stuff like that okay 
So at this point, you say maybe you bring forward the pivot, but he's in the pivot. So the forward we go, he also going forward, right? So maybe you say you bring him back to the pivot, but we have animation on him, you see? So you definitely have an issue there, all right? If he don't have animation, we can write a code to unparent to say, take him out at a certain point. We will do that kind of tricks at the end when we do our fallout animation, right? We will write a code. So the problem is you have to figure another way. So like I said, in most situations, you have to make a copy. So let's take, let's edit and do stuff. Okay, so you have to make copies of the bike. Okay, that's, that's, that's the best solution. That way you have a new set of the rider and the bike. Okay, you have a new set of them. So this animation track will not have any conflict with the new one. So at this stage that we have done with him coming and ending with the land, you will have another set of the track. So this copying system, if you master it, it will make you make all kind of animation, not even in the cutscene, even in your game. You know how you switch some play. At a certain time, you have to switch the whole player. Okay, when I made a multiplayer game, I did that a lot. You know, I used that a lot. You have to have a lot of copies and then like a copy of the thing and you can switch it at the same time you will say okay we can bring a fresh one from from our project right but you're gonna have to set them up maybe the scaling and things are not you know exactly so you, you're gonna have to work a lot but all we have to do is make copies so i just want you to get that idea in mind the same technique is what virtual camera is doing it's just one camera but it's switching virtual ones right so what we have to do not to waste too much time is start thinking about how do we make another set of copy for this point that we want to continue so when we have another set of copy like this all we have to do is use activation track to deactivate this one and then activate our new set of copies and then we roll we start from there from here that is cool because the new ones it will be independent and it won't have no conflict with this animation track okay so let's do that real quick we can so we have our pivot here now it's independent there's nothing in and we have the set of bike and the rider we are animating so let's make a copy of that real quick duplicate okay let's turn off the one we've been working on so we know that we are now mixing with it boom you see it's gone but let's rename it real quick rename let's add c to the end so that we know that this is the copy okay if we tumble around you see him right there so at this point all we have to do is this is the copy, right? All the stuff in belongs here. You see that? There's nothing down. If I drop it, we have stripes. We don't need stripes again to start from where we're going to start here. Okay? So we can delete stripes. Boom. Bring the bike out. Okay? And this bike, let's rename it with C at the end. So we, we just want to make sure we have stains independent for now okay so we have the two copies we need it's like they went back to default right so we're going to have to set it again okay that's not a problem what we will do is we will select the bike turn on the old one you see we got two of them so we will select our bike and bring him down to the floor Okay. it's not bad it's on the ground so this setup 
it's it's very crucial when you when you get this kind of setup you you can make copies of what you are working on and switch them and make things easy for you okay so that's why i want you guys to get comfortable with this so all we have to do x what is the z position of the old bike z is 25 so on our new bike you can give it 25 on the z paste boom it's right there let's drag him and see but like i want everything be zero zero but we could still drag him to 25 boom so he come there at that position too right so we have him here but we need to get him an animation clip so that he can sit on the bike what animation clip do we have we have a drive animation clip right guys so so we can go in and create a new track independent from this one okay so we're gonna get our new we're gonna create our new animation track okay this new animation track we can bring him in okay we can bring him in rename it to remember we have it at one something like that okay Cool. so all we need to do is bring in animation clip the drive one boom so we want that animation to start just right there okay so at this time how do we get him to be here remember when you bring in animation and it's at different places where do you go you go to the animation clip and where do you go on the clip clip transform offset where do we want him to be we want him to come forward we put 25 there because we, we've been putting 25 to bring things around here so let's turn off the old one but he is not on the bike right the 25 on the z brought him to where we want him but he is not on the bike so we still have to work on the clip so now we want him go this way okay right there probably okay 24.95 there you go something like that okay now we have a fresh set of a rider and a bike very cool right so this is what you need in most cases this copy so all we have to do is switch them so in the next class we will look at how we will switch them so let's turn on the old bike so you guys know that we have two copies boom and if we start playing back you see the old one is playing very cool all right so in the next class we will see how we will switch between them and get the one we need. All right, I'll see you guys in this class. Okay guys, welcome. In the last class, we made copies that we needed. So at this stage, we can switch the riders around, right? So as you can see, we have two bikes in our scene, okay? So at the end of where we wanna start the new rider, let's set an activation track let's drop in the old bike we've been animating on okay so from the beginning it will be playing so activation have to be on and we will end it right at where 
you start the new bike okay so let's set one for the new bike too okay so let's bring in activation track so this is our pivot right we want it here so that is the one and this is the bike okay if we drop it in here and we bring it inside the activation the rider will jump forward you know but it's easy fix so let's drop the bike in okay our pivot is here and our rider is in there so if we drop it inside the new activation boom so when he jumps forward like that all we have to do is reset this thing to like initial remember like zero or 0 0.8 or something so let's try zero and see maybe 0 0.8 zoom in a little bit maybe small amount 0.82 so now we have completed the setup if we click on our holder is where we want it right we have the rider using our drive animation we have deactivated the old bike and this one will be deactivated from the beginning okay and then we are set so let's see if the switch is working all right guys because we set up everything like it's supposed to we have you know just like we're saying right so let's move the old bike is supposed to be driving everything is there but the rider for their new bike deactivated because they're not supposed to be around but the bike is around why is the bike around where did we put the bike okay let's look here the bike is not here so select the bike it will show you where it's at okay wow so we put it inside our virtual cameras <laughs> so that's why it's not deactivating let's drop it back inside our new pivot holder boom and it's gone okay so it's working so watch out where you dropping stuff all right so we have the new bike being deactivated from the beginning because we don't need it right so all the way is the old bike that is playing and then the old bike will be gone and we have the new one activated all right so that is the setup very cool so at this stage we can start thinking about the raising of the front so we need to set another new animation track that will hold the new pivot okay so all we have to do is arm this track to start recording and do our rotation right boom so how do we start animating to be on the safe side let's do it from the beginning let's select the character go to frame one okay so at this frame we're going to animate the rotation and the and the z so let's set key for all of them okay one back to zero and here that have numbers you can just set key for the last number give it two and bring it back to one okay so everything goes back to where they are one back to zero cool so from where we're going to start here we're gonna set the same set of keys here okay we can stop it go into our animation track and copy it and paste it here okay but let's do it real quick
cool so we have this area remaining the same so you need to do that because if not sometimes you will start rotating here and the rotating will start from the beginning and you see it would be slow rotating but we only want it to start from here so at this point we can go to the distance how many frames or seconds we want him to use to, ro to rotate the bike front up in the air right so maybe around that area it's okay we can always adjust that all right because he will raise it quicker though but it's okay so let's set or let's call for rotation and use the x-axis here and rotate it like that very cool very cool you get what we need is going up yet the back tie remains on the ground you see very cool so we don't leave it like that because there is no translation in the rotation but when he's rotating the bike like that he'll still be speeding forward right so we need to get some forward motion into the the z so let's switch to translation and give it probably by the time he raised up like this he will be here that's how you can probably figure it out so let's say he will be at this point so grab the z move it to that point okay maybe a little further so it's fine you see the action stay for a little bit longer okay so at this point the same scenario we will go a few frames and drop him down but the drop down animation will be quicker than our old lifts okay so we can bring it a little closer probably like there probably half of it and then we will bring the x which was zero back to zero boom and you see the face will drop boom all right so we got him drop the same scenario we're going to move him certain distance he will use to drop the bike forward okay so our z is set let's grab him probably he will be around here he will drop it so it'll be faster so boom he dropped the bike okay at this time after he dropped it we can let him roll further this is where we will start getting our drive around see so we did the hardest part in this key framing the only hard thing we will do is probably getting him to turn in the circles but that is not as hard as this one and we don't have to switch anything again okay so let's try a little bit he dropped the face down he will move forward some more with some speed okay so maybe we will say drop it he will go fast and he'll be over there all right so that is how you get the animation so let's text it real quick go back to the beginning stop recordings now if we play we won't see the action here so in the next class we will get another camera to track the left so you will see a glimpse of it you know what i mean like he will lift the bike there you go so it's very sharp but it's because we are looking from that angle let's see boom and he drops it and very fast so the cameras is what is going to help us to get a better look at it all right so in the next class we will add another camera and tweak the one we have a little bit then we have some good shots and then we get the drop animations all right all right cool guys so i'll see you in the next okay guys welcome let's continue on working from the last class we were able to create 
some keyframes, right? So we were able to raise the front of the bike like that, okay? But our Cinemachine shots are not really helping us right now. We're not getting, you know, what's going on right. So we need to, like normally I will, I will complete the whole keyframes around. But let's let's work on the camera a little bit. Maybe we can tweak this one and see if we can add one more before we keep rolling. Because because I want you guys to see what we've been doing, right? We can we can look at them like like how it is right now and stuff. But you know, we wanna also work on the cameras too as we go in from this point we can do that. So the Cinemachines cameras, each shot you have to, you know, tweak them to get what you want. Every scenario is different, right? So let's see. Um, let's get to the virtual cameras. Select the first one we talked about. And this one we can go in and tweak it a little bit. We can also animate you know these keys so let's see the aiming y axis so let's see which one we can animate maybe the y okay i want the view be like like this instead of like we are looking at the head you know from the top i want it to be on the side a little bit so let's grab this view real quick before I show you the keys and stuff okay so we select it and control shift F you know so let's see see that is good but you see how we lost him he go off screen you know so we can animate him to come in so we get a better look at him okay so beginning let's let's shift the z still probably like there see and as he's jumping let's try and see if we can animate the y to follow him going up there see let's try that so let's try that so we can get this big view and probably follow him a little bit because we are still not following him okay we are still aiming but we can try to animate you know around it okay so if we get better look it's also good it's the same as getting the animations right right so the shot are very important let's create animation track let's drop in the virtual camera we are working on very simple stuff okay so at this stage we can arm it or set it to record and let's go back into the properties so at the beginning at frame one we're gonna work on the y on the aim so it's 49 now 48 and bring it back to 49 okay that give us a key there so it's still at you know what i would do i'll move this track to the top okay so that we can go down there you go and then i'll select it back and I'm trying to get a feet to come in and let's see if we can go up so we got some feet what about we key all of them so that in case we have to make changes to them so it's 10.8 make it 10.9 bring it back to 8 four to bring it back to one and bring it back to two okay so so we got some keys here 
that give us our first key. Okay, we can, we can also key the screen, but normally I don't like to key the screens. So let's see if we can mess with just this ones. So he's going forward. We get a better view. And then he's jumping. So at this point, we can shift the Z a little bit. You know, so like it will feel like we are following him, right? So like he's there, he's going. See, then he jump. So where he jump? Over there, you can bring him down. At the same time, bring. the z some more still keep some more space here so it feels like he ran far and he jumped let's see let's start it again somewhere between the jump he he go off screen before we get it so I want to know that key so we can use the the keys the back and forth one so go back one key he's down forward one key he's up so at this key we can bring him down a little bit okay we got him down and then We're still we're still looking at him okay he's going he's getting far so maybe at this point we can get the Z to bring him to focus a little bit and the X to guide him on that side if you don't slow down on this movement it will feel like the animation is happening at the same spot okay so we don't want to like do too much but we also want to get him in spot so let's see he goes he jump the animations happen So he's too much over here. See he so so let's see if if we can bring this X screen There you go. Much better. Okay, then he raised the thing. So that is how you, you know, fight with these values and get different shot too sometimes. Right? So you get another camera in let's create another cine machine shot okay so this will be our second camera to pick it out from here when he lands, right? Okay, cool. So, you don't have to always create virtual cameras from the top menu. We can come here. 
we can create a virtual camera for the clip we just created okay so let's do that so we have a virtual camera to for this clip all right simulation shot this shot is also not going to follow all right we just want to capture the face lift a little bit so let's drop in our second character to the aim field maybe this kind of angle and let's see the field of view let's get a little bigger because this is going to be shorter okay so see we got that face lift and we can track let's see there you go something like that so we will have a third camera after we get the animation around the ground but as you notice the volume sunlight is bothering us again right there so let's go in volume and rotate the sky one more time the sky rotation here maybe let's see we're still gonna see it somewhere along the way <laughs> see right there but it's okay like that point there we go something like that all right okay cool but i think the sun being here i didn't it kind of like see kind of border the effect so Probably we're going to have to animate this thing around. You know, you can animate stuff, you know. So, the volume, exposure. Okay, let's leave it here and see if we will see it again somewhere. Like here is okay when he's coming. It's not because he will run past it then all our views are better so okay we will leave it right there okay cool if not like we can animate it all we have to do is give it a track and start keying this thing around okay so you have a lot of controls on what's going on all right so at this point we're gonna think about how we will animate him around okay but let's check the shocks again it's not bad so he ends right there that is where he ends because there's no more the animation ends here okay what i want us to do maybe will help is let's go in inside here let's see let me show you where he left the bike let's extend over there because they happen too fast right let's double click on this track and it will take us here so what we could do to make things nicer maybe when he lands all this gap is landing he lands at this point okay he raised the front okay he drops it so the racing up the, the bike let's extend that a little bit to probably like there and see what's happening so see boom 
So it's giving us a little effects there. Because things are happening too fast. See. So maybe we can close it a little bit. I'm thinking about when he's racing the bike, if we can get it on a different angle, you know. But I know you guys get an idea, so I'm not going to stress too much about the shots, okay. Now you guys can go in and create all kind of cool shots, all right. So we're not going to stress too much about it, but you guys get an idea where we are right now we are giving this side a little slow down then he drop it faster and then another speed so at this point we will start animating him around and we got two more stage of animation we will just move him around that will be quick then we will shake the bike and the bike will crash at the end and then he will fall we get that fall animation okay we have so far is the hardest part of it okay what we have done is the hardest part you see it takes a little bit of tricks and we are also doing keyframe but we are getting our slow-mo over here okay when he lifts the front of the bike right there then he drops it and the small speed he will drive around all right, guys, so we are pretty much almost done with this thing. Out of tweaking and setup and planning, but very simple shot. See, that is what happens. In most cases, in game and in movies, sometimes the little shot could take you forever. But when you are able to get that shot inside a movie or in the game, then it turns everything around you, everything nice, right? So that is what is going on right now so trying to get this cool shot then it will be a cutscene for a game or whatever we are working on right so in the next class we will continue and get him around and then we are almost done with this section of the course Okay guys, welcome. So this is where we left last time, okay? But I want us to get it a little fun, okay? Because the drive around is too short. So let's move another few frames more. And you don't have to go back to where we started. We can pass that area if we want to because there's still room around here. Why not drive around it? And make some cool tannins right so let's try that okay we're gonna plant a cool way of driving around from here we're gonna make the bike shift to side and side all right so at this distance we're gonna we're gonna calculate you see the distance here like eight 15 to 8, 18, you break it to half. You do about four of them. So now that he's, this is the end one, he comes here, he will move forward on the Z. Move forward on the Z. Get rotation. Let's go back to here, this key. Let's set a key there. Let's set a key on rotation, like I always do, right? One, go back to zero. Then we come to where we have ended right now. We can shift him on one side. See? That cool effect. Let's get that in. So, shift on this side. 
you have to check how deep he is inside the ground. It's not bad. Okay. But it's the speed. We should have we should have from this point we should have checked to get a smooth speed for each section. We should have checked how far we're moving on the blocks. But it's okay, we can go in and shift this the distances, right? So we got him shift to to the left. Let's go another one, half of it. We time it with the distance. So this one could be more, it's okay. So let's get translate. Move him forward. And get the Z. Sometimes I use it on the inspector because sometimes you don't get a grab right and you and then you will shift him back here. So he's he's having fun. That's how he crashed it. <laughs> So he comes to this side, okay, and he's speeding too. So now this one, he will go regular. So we will get rotation, the Z to come back to normal level. Like that. Get in and see. So this one. We got level, right? We don't have speed in this one yet. Come back here and get him to speed some more forward. The Z translate. Up to there. And we can get one more shift and start do our crash. Here he will be turning really, really fast. So speed him again. Get rotation on the Z. Bring him this side. Some more. Another. Take him back. Speed him. So at this stage, we are doing some series of shaking right there. So he's all. And then he'll go a few more. driving he's having fun let's see the last one if we got speed in it okay there's speed one more he will get a stream he'll get a stream rotation on the sides and then the, the crash will come in so on the rotation this one Very extreme one. Get speed on the on the Z. Speed a little bit. Get another one. Get rotation to the other side. So 
extreme one and then speed <laughs> I'm using my left hand on the mouse because my hand I, I broke one of my fingers that's why most of the time I go back before I go forward <laughs> but it's cool right I know you guys noticed that I've been doing that since the course okay cool so so probably at this stage we can let him fall because he's doing too much right so let's at this angle the next one you will go a few frames do we have speed on this one yes we do so we go a few frames and how do we do the crash so he will get this rotation on the y because we move forward some keyframes get this rotation on the y see because he was sliding too much on that angle so it slides him okay rotation rotation z get a little extreme okay see you don't want the bike dip too much into the ground so let's see how we get so we will text the others other step all right so let's get more extreme we can level let we can level it halfway and then get y the same key get y translate bring him whoa bring him very sensitive that's my left hand to get like he's touching right just a little bit so the bike is it's kind of fall kind of thing but the bike's supposed to slide forward so we will move a few more distance but this one we have speed in it no speed so let's move him on the Z like that like we are supposed to get a stream shaking but we can close this gap to have that one okay and we'll leave maybe one for the front part of it and then there's a speed in it crash is happening a few more frames let's go back a little bit because I want it to be Wow, so it's just a frame intervals we've been doing. So that is very little. So we gotta go in and give it some more space. Okay, cool. So we will move him, rotate him around because the bike is now going crazy, right? On the Y, rotate him like this. This point. Now the bike is flat and then forward will edit undo like that some more another frame forward rotate the bike at this stage it's up to you how crazy you want the crash to be okay so we will not do too much we will we will end it around here and go 
slide a little bit forward. Now the last one, it will just slide some more faster forward. Okay. One more key. Because the keyframes are so little, we have to go in and make changes. Get, translate, and slide him more. Like that. So at that part where he ends right now, we will introduce the four animation. And around this stage, we have to write a code because he will fall and he will still be, the bike will still be inside of him. So the bike will still be around. Okay. So we have to write a code to unparent him from the bike. Okay. So that will be something we will do. So let's see a different angle. Let's see. You see, very cool. You can see that there's some accident going on. Then it falls. Okay, cool. So let's play the whole thing and see. When, when the camera track him, it will be more, more fun. So in the next class, we will have a camera to track him and we will bring in the full animation and we'll see how we will finish that part, okay? So I'll see you in the next class. Okay guys, welcome. So this is where we left at the last class, but things are happening really fast because Look at the speed see it's very fast the problem is we were working with a very zoom out you see so all this space we were giving was just one frame just a keyframe interval so it will make things go really really fast so you see you see our zoom level it was really zoom in so like we're supposed to be working like this or maybe even like this so that if we give distance it will be more keyframes like the seconds we're supposed to be using right but it's okay so now you know this issue so what we can do is we can go in you see it's very crowded very compact that's why stuff are happening really really fast so before we do that let's go back to our timeline because we're going to give some more room. It's small room here though, but let's go to like 20. Okay. Probably even more, but let's stay 20 and see. It's going to have to bring, let's go 25. Okay. So that we don't, let's go back okay cool so he comes he make that turn Over here, it wasn't bad. So we can grab everything here. Let's start giving some space. But I 
things don't happen too fast. Okay. So keyframe animation, this is what you mostly do. Timing and coming in and doing all these things. Okay. Because we don't have specific distance we want to go on each action or each, you know. Because we are doing it like we never even have no idea what we are doing. See, we see something going on. It's not bad, but we can even expand it a little bit. You see there's some speed, there's a, there's a crash going on. So let's go back to, this is our old one. He drops it, he turn. So over here, this the accident coming in, you see. And he slides. Goes. Okay, cool. So let's go in back. Okay, so it's just a matter of going in and giving it some space. Now you can see we got some space in a little bit. So let's see how that flow is. There you go. Whoa. See, that end part can go faster. All right, so oh, around here, He's driving normal, and then the end part. But there's some um, dip into the ground in some areas. Let's watch that. I see the bike go down in the ground at certain points. Like right there, right there, right there. Whoa. So that will need a little tweaks. Go inside the scene, go back to the animator, and we can animate around here too. Okay? So I think we should have a camera following him so that we see him closer, and then we will adjust the paths where he go down the ground, right? So I think that will help us to see it from here much better when he goes down like like right there he goes down. See we can fix it right now but let's track him with a camera face. Okay. So comes in 
we drop the buy this is our last drop over there so we will bring the sinew machine shot back a little bit to around there we can we can come in and change that end so from here so so far is the cinema machine shot camera number two that is still tracking him because there's no shot at the track yet right so what we can do if we want we can duplicate that camera and tweak it and get it zoom out to the, to him because that shot is now bad you know it's kind of follow him kind of follow him from here very good maybe if we get a closer shot so let's do that let's create another shot okay starting from here and then we'll end it and in our cameras let's duplicate camera two rename camera three okay and let's drop that for our new shot okay cool so when we come there that camera is still tracking what our rider so we have to be in the game and see so right here he dropped and he switched to it so we want to get closer to to him so we start tweaking around a little bit and let's go the field of view is already close we want to see him not too close are we there let's see a little bit right you see that's that's better so now we have all these dippings we have to work on you know we have just a matter of going in with the keys and raising stuff up okay you can even try the the curves you can try the curves to see if it will be easier fixed than raising it we will check all right so we get a closer shot that's not bad then the accident comes in very cool so how do you think about how close we are getting him right now it's not bad so he comes let's play let's play Okay, we can work on we can work on the screen a little bit he's too much at the end of this on the right side of the screen so let's shift him back see when you are driving forward it's cool to see some gaps in the front okay then you are already at the end of the of the thing right so even we can give some gap here at the back a little bit like that see so a small phase going and maybe see we see the back too much maybe we can get more side view of him so let's see Let's go to the transform and see the X. Maybe like that. Okay. And then we can get our lens to go back probably like four. Like that. Let's see. we 
get a much better closer look at him. Okay, let's play. Then in the next class, we will fix the dippings, all right? We will use the calves and stuff to uh, move the keys much better. There you go. Nice. Nice. Okay. Even though with all that messed up, you know, going deep into the ground, but with a better shot, you see how satisfied you get. So you have to spend time and do all this stuff, right? So when you fix those dippings, then you have a very good shot, all right, guys? So we'll do that in the next class. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, guys, welcome. Let's continue from the last class, okay? Let's see what's going on. Slow mo effect drop down. Yeah, nice shots over here. But there are some dippings into the grounds. So in this class, we will work on that and then we will introduce our fall animation and also the throw animation. All right, so let's go and find that track. So we are working on this track, okay. Let's shut this so that we know we are at 20 seconds. Okay, so this is the track we're working on. The last class, we open the keys a little bit, okay? But there are some dippings as he drives around. It kind of goes inside, all right? Like right there see so we're gonna go into our calves okay let's grab him and let's go inside the calves okay so when we look inside the calves it's all crazy see it's a lot of stuff going on so we can see what's going on So we are around, it's not even the if animation is happening before 20 seconds. We just set our timeline to 20 seconds. So we are, we've been animating to about 15, almost like 17 seconds so far. This is what is going on. Okay, so you, you wonder which one you're going to go in and tackle, right? If you don't know, but this is happening by rotation okay because remember when we rotate him on side and side we were using the rotations so to look for what is going on we have to get to the rotation keys right and this is the rotation keys if i select put position keys these are position keys right so each key have three axes right so let's stay on the rotation. So the rotation have X, Y, and Z. Okay. So which axis did we use to rotate him on his right side? You know, so we can go into the scene. And we are lucky he's right here. So let's get rotation gizmo and we were using the z because you see so even we can get a stream on the on the z rotations see so we went too far so we can fix it with with using these values when key when we have recording on we can fix it but we're gonna do that with every frame, okay? So the calves is gonna help us because the calves, we know that we did about, at this point, this is the calf. So it's on the Z, right? So this is the point where it went to down, okay? This calf, and there's one here. If we come to this point here, he went a little bit more on that, on 
he went a little bit more on the left side. Okay, he went more on the left side. Then here, here he's he's straightening up. Then here, here he's on the right side, but not too bad. You see the level of the curve determine how bad he went inside the ground. So if we come here, you see that the whole bike almost went in. That's why we have a deeper curve. You are dealing with a graph. You see here he's at negative, almost negative 50. Here is about negative 40. So the curve is determining how bad we rotate the Z axis to go inside the ground. Okay, so to fix it, we will start from our first one. So from all the way from the beginning, everything is straight. He was driving straight on the on the Z. You see, everything is straight until we, we decided to rotate him side and side. So these are the keys we use, okay, around here. That is when we move him side and side. So the first key is straight. This time we rotate him to the left. This time we rotate him to the to the right. So the left key, the camera is not looking there. So we can take advantage of that and and use that extreme bend to that side. Okay. But when he rotate to the right, our camera is looking. All right. So here you we, we have to adjust stuff a little bit because you it's gonna be in the game or in the movie right so simple select that key okay and then drag it up as we drag it up you will see that the rotation will happen this time we are not using keyframes see that that, that is one good advantage of of the curves okay the curves we don't need to set auto recording on we are adjusting the line because the thing is this line is the one that is controlling the flow so the key move it here all right so now we're going to straight things out okay so all we have to do is move it up small okay not not straight you know just to have a little bit and curling right because there will be speed in there and we already know he's doing that rotation right so just a little bit off the ground is is okay about there all right so on the left side we can leave him a stream so that will make that back and forth rotation happen still all right if you have a camera that will switch back and forth you look at him on the right side and you look at him on the left side you have to animate this Okay, we will use the animation so that we will get the amount we want on the left side and the amount we want on the on the right side okay so that is how you come in so you see how easy this is because i'm talking too much about it that's why it looks like we are doing something if you are working it yourself you just come in you know this issue so all you do is you see the ones that are bad and you drag them up very simple so this one you can select it and move it up just like that a little bit see because we know he's already tossing the bike around okay this is the extreme one so let's go over there on the left side we will leave it okay so that still give us some effect on that see here is very extreme see so we will do the same and move it up. Okay. You see, it, it affects the camera roll and everything because we are using his translation. I mean, we are using his translation or transform, right? So if we look up here, see, this is very extreme. This time we lay him flat. Okay. So let's see. See lay him flat that's why it's very extreme so if we want to get this line to be straight you can select here and 
shift select this one hold on shift select this one see we got a curve on it we, we can right click over here and we say on both tangent make them linear boom so we get a straight line so let's see the straight line what is given to the bike See the straight line laying him down on the ground almost like good right you can come in and move stuff around if you want to so click outside select this key and move it straight okay you can there's a controls here that will allow us to move the tangent as we want so most times we use this when you are animating like a ball a door or some simple things but you see we, we're finding some use for it in the bike slidings all right so cool so this part is where he's still on the floor you know and then he will go forward okay so he's on the floor so that is how you come in and you adjust the curve very simple all you do is you pick the curve you're going to work on right so we figured that is the z that we use to rotate it so we will use that curve to manipulate it if we want to work on the y axis we come in and we work on it very simple okay and the movement we do will remain we don't need a keys they will stay there all right because that is the curve we what you move the position you move it to it will remain there all right okay cool so the keys remain the same and let's plan where we will introduce our throw animation he will throw something okay let's plan that so in the next class we will implement those ones okay it will come over here on this track let's bring in a throw clip it will need um, to be adjusted to let's bring in a four clip the four clip will come somewhere at the end where the bike is getting crazy see it's already um, the throw effect is in now you see where he is we have to adjust the clip transform but we are not worried about that right now so i just want to show you stuff we are bringing in so in the next class we will tweak them all right and then the fall effect comes in the fall animation comes in see he falls okay but the bike is still around him okay so So he fall and let's go to the scene look for him F so he fall but the bike is still kind of around him so we will we will place the animations where we think they should be get the bike out and the bike when he fall and he sit down the bike will slide forward a little bit all right not too far from him so he will lay around him all right so we not we don't want him to be inside the bike okay so in the next class we will work on these animations all right and when we get them all set you see that you know we did pretty good and everything will be nice for this call okay guys welcome let's continue on working in the last class we went in and we make some adjustment to the bike dipping into the floor right so we came in here and we mixed with it with the 
z axis on the rotations right so you now know how to tackle this situation so in this class what we will look at is so if we come here you see that he's he's at the end of it that means we need to tackle the offset right so if we look at our drive offset the z is 7 0 0.74 copy it's easy you can remember and you will put it right here 0 0.74 so he comes to where he's supposed to be right the same to to the four animation we come there the four you you can hardly see but here you see that he's supposed to sit in the middle here because this is where he's sitting so the same let's put 0 0.74 right so he comes in the middle okay cool so we can play it and see how our tweaking the dipping in the ground how it came out all right so let's get some space and play raise slow-mo There you go, very nice. You throw. See, the bike is doing that zigzag, but still we don't see crazy dipping on the floor. That is very cool. But what I notice is that after he throw, the hands is still in the air. Let's see one more time. He jump in the air, he lands, he lift the face, slow-mo, drop it, drive around speed. There you go. See, see the hand still in the air. Okay. The fall, it don't take long before the fall comes in, right? We can leave it like that. Or if you want it to go down before the fall comes in, you can copy the drive because the drive, the hands are down. You can copy the drive, copy and bring your head here and paste it here okay so right after right after or you can give some distance he will hold the hands in the air a little bit and then he will get a drive animation back right see so that gives him he throws the hands then he goes to the fall all right so we, we will leave it like that Okay, he will give it a little space. He will hold the hands for a little while. And then he will fall, right? So pretty much that's about it. what I'm thinking right now is probably at the end when he fall, he's kind of like far, you know, from our view and in the shot, you know. But that is the last shot, you know, so we probably have to get him very close shot on him a little bit all right so let's say when the accident is happening there will be kind of a close shot camera over here so we can shot in here create another cine machine shot and end it to the track length we can still use camera tray camera tray we can use camera tray duplicate it okay rename it to camera four okay now for our new shot we can pick camera four okay so it's for now it's just like camera three is continuing right all we have to do is when we go in we will start getting closer shot at him okay we can we can go to camera four positions and see how we can get it 
So I'm closer shot on him. That's that's rotation. So maybe something like that or something. You can also go to the aim and get a screens. Check the the lens. It's already four. But let's see how it's getting the shot. Let's play from there. Let's see, it's not bad, but you can you can get a very good angle. See here, we see the back here. Maybe we can grab the face this time. So let's see. We can also mix with it in the scene if 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 this will work. So you can grab a face like that, something like that. Okay. So when he falls, we we will get a very close look at him, right? Maybe in 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 a game where he have facial animation which i'll have a cause it's probably going to be part of this series you know like you can talk you know maybe you, you can take the hat off the helmet out and start talking so you get a closer shot at him like this all right so i think this close is okay maybe like that okay cool so so it will end like that all right so we will get a close accident shot see then it ends like that but you see how he's still around inside the bike right he's still inside the bike so we need to get him out of the bike at this point and move the bike out just a little bit you know from him because right now you can't sit in the metal these are like you know the bike you can't sit inside like that you can't go in your body like that so in 3d is okay but you are creating reality right so this is how we're going to do this i think this is where we will implement the unparent thing so because now you cannot take him out from you know it, it will require a little planning we cannot just take him out from the bike the bike is inside him this is the bike it's inside him right so f to zoom in see we select the bike so the bike don't have no animation on it so let's unparent the bike because the rider sometimes if you unparent it from here it can go back to the beginning remember those conflicts on the keyframe situations we will keep him inside the pivot holder right and we will we will unparent the bike okay so let's write a simple code to do the unparent and so in the next class we will work on a signal track. So I'm about to show you how we will use the signal track to, to activate at this point that, okay, I'm pairing him, take him out, take the bike out, right? So we will need a signal to send to the bike and the riders for this to happen, all right? But let's write that on parent code in this class and in the next class, we will continue. So far, we only have a code on the editor, right? So let's create in our main folder. Let's create a new folder. So inside our script folder, let's create a new script, okay? Create c sharp script let's name it and 
parent. Okay, so we have new class called on parent coming from mono behavior, right? So all we have to do is create variable to hold a temporary for position for us, right? So public transform and here in the update we can say this dot transform that parent equals to the four object we are creating and I'll explain to you in a minute okay so what is going on is we have a public transform you will create an empty object that will hold you know we will tell the bike to go be inside that tip object right so it will move where we place it that is where the bike will go that will in here at the update is because we will attach this to the bike. So we will tell the bike, this means it's, it's attached to the bike. It means we are referring to the subject, right? The bike is this, okay? We can take the this out and just leave it like, just transform the pairing. It will work too. The pairing for him, on the bike will be our new object, all right? So let's save it. Okay, so we will attach this on script to the bike. Okay. And here is asking for the empty object we're going to create for the bike to go in. It means the bike will jump from, from the rider and it will be the part of the new object. So let's create an empty game object. But let's go, for us not to move it around a lot, let's go to where the accident has happened. Select. Let's reset the play. Okay. So at where the accident happens, let's look for the bike. Okay. So it's over here because we want the empty object we are about to create to be like over here, okay? So we will say create an empty game object, okay? That's the reason why I was looking for, for him right here because now it's around, our creation is over here, see? And it's inside, so we have to take it out. Where do we want the bike to go? All we have to do is move the new object to probably here, like there, right? So it's not far from the accident scene or from him. So at this stage, we can name this four. And we will give the four to the bike script, okay? So recap, we created a script called on parent. 
and we are giving it an empty game object okay we are giving it an empty game object so this is the byte this script is the byte so we're telling the script when the accident comes your parent transform right your parent is going to be the new object four you see very simple so your new parent is going to be four okay but is the signal track we will create the signal track we will create is the one that will tell the system that the accident have happened it will tell the bike so if you look here it say create signal track okay and then when we create signal track we right click on it say add signal emitter okay so this emitter is the one that will send the signal to the bike to say okay at this point we need you to go to the four your new mother is the four you are a child to, to the four now okay so in the next class we will set that up All right guys so i'll see you guys in the next class okay guys welcome we created our signal and we work on our script for the bike so that it get out from where it is right now and go to a different parent and different position right so how does you implement the signal the signal track is requesting a signal receiver so who is the signal receiver it's the bike okay so far the bike is what we are working on so it will ask us to create a signal receiver on the main bike is that what we want yes so we create a new signal receiver when we click on the signal all right it's asking us for an action what do we want this signal to do let's click on the bike the bike also have the signal receiver we can add action to it here or we can do it here at the signal level so let's add a new reaction okay and it's dealing with what the bike see the bike is what we are working on and we want to work it editor and runtime but the truth is the actual action of on parent will work only on the runtime but we can have the signal operation we can see how it's working if we use the edit and the runtime okay so how do we want to implement it we come to the functions we see that you can perform action on so many things you know on transform so many things right so this is exactly like an event thing you can do so many things at this time but we are just simply interested in a simple telling our on parent script to start working so that is a boolean situation start or not okay so we want it to work on the boolean enable right so you will pick that and for the boolean system if it is empty it's not checked that means nothing is happening if we checked it that means we want that script to be enabled so where is that script first let's check the bike the bike have the signal receiver and the same implementation with it is here too we can add more implementation so one signal can handle so many things that's why it's so powerful right so this is the script from beginning we are playing right we want him to be part of the bike like that so I, at this point we don't want him to be part of the bike so when we start it will be like this okay and then when the signal comes in then it will turn it on the boolean thing will turn it on okay so we already turned it on here and it's waiting for the signal to come in before it turned the script on very simple so the next thing we can do is where do we want to start the on parent maybe we can do it at the end
the player head have to pass the signal before it works okay so like right there it will pass it then the bike will go to a different position so where is our four at right now our four is still around the bike okay so we want the bike move a little bit further away so all we have to do is move our four position to probably there just a little bit away from the rider so we can test it right now and see how things work but remember the signal will only work inside the runtime play play okay so let's look at the bike because we pick to do it inside the editor and the runtime we can see that after it passed the signal we will see that the unparent is activated so let's check that before we play from the main playhead okay so play boom you see the signal turn it on that means it will work too in the play time and then the unparent will happen the bike will jump into the four empty object very cool so let's turn it off start from beginning and let's play so this time we're gonna play just here in the in the editor and so let's turn maximum off and hit play so hit, look here and let's go look at zoom out a little bit so we see everything what's going on so what you you will notice is if things go through the bike will be part of the fall very simple but let's give it some room so it will play longer for us to see if not it will just jump back to the beginning and we don't get to see how things was okay very cool so we can play without maximizing for now hit play he runs so let's look for the unparent thing he's driving around 10 coming speed having fun he will throw in a minute he throws hands go down driving he's trying to have some fun swerving and swerving then accident coming blah 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 and then boom see we did it so the bike the unparent happened so the script get activated okay very cool the script get activated so where we put we put our four and empty object it wasn't bad behind him a little bit okay and and now if we drop the four object the bike is in hallelujah right so little thing you want to happen look at how far we have to go but if you understand this implementation you can do so many things especially here you know you can you can work on so many things it's just a matter of when it gets there it's just like a trigger in in the gameplay like it's even powerful than trigger because you can add so many things for trigger trigger will use one thing and you know so you have to try and use it for so many other stuff all right just a matter of messing with it so we did it right the bike is outside it's different from and the cool thing about the event is when we stop the runtime play everything reset to beginning the unparent will go back to how we set it from beginning okay now it's set to be enabled so when we turn our play off it will go like off okay so very cool so at this point we we if we are satisfied with where the bike is 
let's go look maybe so let's find the position on the z remove the z right on the z let's see maybe we want the bike to get away a little bit okay so on the z it will be three three thirty three point three three point three three <laughs> 33.3 okay on the z maybe we want it to come let's see the the x whoa it's getting far yeah maybe like over there right so it filled our shot much better okay and he's sitting here very cool so what we can do is we will copy this for position right you have to pause your play when you are doing all this stuff so while it's in the pause we will copy this values okay copy component and then when we go back into the scene when we turn it off we will let our four use this new position we have set in the runtime okay very cool so let's stop pause and stop play so now if we select our our four objects okay we can give it a new values so paste as values component values boom so we get a new set of values for it so now if we reset okay we clear our screen warnings and we say we go to inspector if we have two windows we can get maximize so that's why i try to hide one and we set maximize on here we're gonna try it in the full screen okay guys so first of all let's see how the bike you see it went back to like off right it went back to off anytime the runtime have to start it have to be off if it is on the bike will not be inside him okay very cool so let's test it maximize play okay guys he runs he jumps boom he lifts slow-mo he drop by he drives around very cool turn sharp turn again we definitely need rotation for the ties because now we can see the ties right now he throws hands go down he's having fun swerving and swerving right then accident come in Brah. and then he falls right boom so if we pause again the bike get our new position from the new set of position we gave the four these tricks allow you to do so many things we don't have time like i will show you a project i have a unity asset store where i made a forklift operate like you just use it you can really pick stuff but i have problem with you know gravity because you know when you're picking stuff and the forklift have to pick a pallet before it picks a box and but i was able to do all that you know with code and little tricks like this okay so you guys can check that because there's a video to it you can literally operate the forklift to pick stuff and you know it was still working with physics so it was hard so you have to switch stuff like i show you in this course and all these events and little tricks like this in the next class we will get rotation for for the wheels that will be a little cold a little cold or scrape will right for the bike to rotate tie to rotate and then we will move on all right guys so i'll see you in the next class Very cool. okay guys welcome let's continue working okay so we're doing pretty good in the last class we implement our signal in this class we're going to implement rotation for the ties okay so let's do that let's 
let's start getting things together okay all right cool so let's create a new script I rotate it compiles let's screen our scene go to timeline and reset ourselves okay and then back to project and open our tie rotate script So we have another script okay same process we're going to create a few few variables okay this is going to be a very simple rotation we're not going to do anything fancy okay so let's create these two variables so we get our game object tie which we will assign to our bike tie and the speed at which it will rotate right it will be float so in the update let's get a very simple code here Okay, guys so what we have as you can see is very simple just transform rotation okay so transform the rotate and we're gonna rotate the x-axis zero and on the y you're gonna give it the speed times 10 negative 10 we are using negative because the way the bike is rolling you have to go the opposite way okay cool so that's about it and then delta time to keep it on every level of speed all right okay cool so let's save and get back to unity so let's clean our scene i like to clean these stuff i don't like seeing them and then into the timeline reset it because anytime it compiles like that, stuff get that way, you know. So we have to go look for our bike. And we're going to work only on the new rider. Okay. So we can go inside the scene. Look for the rider. F for zoom. Right there. Good. So where is the tire? Let's get the front one. So we can select the tire. Okay. And two front inner. That's not a tire. Okay. Front tire. Okay. So we can add. A script to it project tie rotate strip okay so it's asking for the tie you want to use right so front tire drop it in that will be the speed we can change it if it is too slow or too fast okay so we got to work on add it to the back wheel too in case that also reveal it's right there so back wheel back tie okay so we got that one let's throw the script on it and give it the back tire that's about it okay so we 
can test it now and see what's going on. Let's go back to timeline and get to game view and play. Driving around, having fun. He throws. Still rolling. Then accident comes in. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so what happened is the tie is going to rotate if we are in the runtime because it's a new code and this code will execute only in the runtime but if we want to have a runtime here in our editor we can work on our script okay so maybe up here we can give it like If unity underscore 2018.3 underscore, let's say underscore three underscore or, or newer, what do you want it to do? You want it to you want it to execute in edit mode okay so ed, execute in edit mode right here okay then we will end if enter Okay, so that will allow this code, if we got it right, to work right here in the editor. What it's doing is if we are using a Unity that is 2018.3 or higher, it, it should execute it, you know. So if it is we compile and we are using this code, it will check the type of unity we are using and if it is one of them it will work here in the editor all right so let's save it and go check so it compiles let's clean our system get back to beginning you can play and see what happened driving around shop time he throws Hands down. Then the crash coming. It's working, guys. So the, the ties are rolling. You know. So let's get to the scene. And you can see the reflection in the view. That's the ties are rolling. So I want to yeah so it will keep rolling because we have set it to keep working here in the editor and we haven't given the code any limitations so it will just keep rolling because for what we are doing it can keep rolling and we don't care right so i want to find it and show you here in the 
so we get a better closer look at it okay so you guys see it's rolling so now you can go in and change the speed if you want to okay let's try maximum screen okay let's check the bike to see if see because we play here in the editor it turn on the unparent so we are about to play full screen so let's turn it off and set maximum screen and then play he ran he jumps boom he lands he lifts slow-mo the front he drops it now he's driving around speed you see the ties are rolling very cool very cool you see the ties are rolling there you go very nice so he throws and he's chilling so the accident comes in you can see the ties rolling and everything there you go you see very cool the back one is also working guys so it's getting very interesting okay guys so i'll see you guys in the next okay guys welcome so in the last class we worked on our tire rotation so in this class what we will do is we will continue so we're going to implement a trail that follow the bike right so what we will do is for the first rider the bike start with the revealing and the effects right so here we don't need a trail over here but the bike comes in right so probably around here we will have a trail for it but we don't want to start working on it over here because it ends very quick and then the new one comes in right this is the new rider so let's use the new rider bike to work on the trail effects that follows it and then if we get it we can bring copy for the old rider very simple right okay cool so let's go in and find the rider so the trail start coming in from the back here okay from the back here you you can you can have it come from anywhere but this is how the tron legacy you know the bike that is how it is but we're not going to get it the same as the tron legacy see most of the stuff we can get it the same but we are not trying to like 100 percent copying everything right so we will create something different and you also can make it also different or you can make it the same it's all up to you so what we will do is we will have a trail coming from the back here as he drives around so how do we do that so very simple let's create a game object in the rider let's create a cube okay and it's right here in the back but very big right we want something very small so let's come to the scale probably 0 It's still big so maybe one so right now where is it at it's inside the rider but we want it inside the bike okay there's so many stuff in the bike but it's cool so we will move it on the Z to go inside the bike. OK. 
okay bring it on y down a little bit going down the ground maybe like there make sure it's in the middle around the stripes area okay but as you can see it has some rotation it shifts small so let's see if we got rotations to be there you go so it gets straight okay for scaling it's okay so it will come from back there okay so what we need to do is to add the trial to it okay the trial effect is very simple but the tweaking is what you have to spend a little time on it to effects and trial render okay so it comes in and, and at this point if we move the bike around you will see the trail coming out right and you see how it's pink maybe that's not what we want and also there is a gap here see so we probably we need to push push it inside a little bit so let's rename this or let's keep it cube you see it faster so what we can do is move it in like that when you are not playing for a while it will go because it's it's working with time okay and this here this area is how wide the width of it so if we go down the width gets smaller so let's move it a little bit to get some some trials and let's start bringing the width down you see the width the width is coming down so it's kind of like a little tricky if you want to work on it you always got to have some some of them in the scene Okay, you can have it bigger like this if you want to, or smaller like like that. Okay. So let's work on the colors. Here we can the blending kind of like it don't really comes in, but we can put it there. Let's give it about like that. So if you select them. We can change the colors. This one may be red. Okay. And this one may be blue. Where the colors and your, your rare material comes in, is the material area you see it's zero there's no material so we're going to go into the project under materials and create a new material let's name it trials okay so this is where you get your colors from okay so here we will give it blue, something like that, Maybe a little lighter kind of. Then the rare power is over here under the HDR emission glow. Okay. So here we will give it blue too, somewhere around here. Or maybe here and then the power is at the intensity so let's push it a little bit but, but let's get a little bit of try in the scene so we see what's going on you see so we have something 
So we are still working on the material. We haven't put it to the trial yet. So let's go back, select the trial, and give it under the material part, give it the new trial we are working on. Boom. There you go. You see? So, so from here, if we play some more, that is the accident part. Okay. Okay, so here we will go into the project back to the material and then inside the intensity, let's pump that up, you see? So the intensity is where the power is, okay? So, see, very cool. So it looks bigger to me. I don't know if you guys like it when it's big like this so let's see because the original tron effect is really big but kind of different shape you know you can do all that stuff if you want to you can have a transparent something between and you put that in here under the the base map Okay, you can put something that you will work on with a ship. So it will pick that ship and then you you pump up the intensity. Okay, but I want us to bring it down small. Maybe. So we have to go back to the, to the trial and bring it down some more. Okay, maybe there. It's not bad. Even it's still big for me. Maybe like that. But if we go that small, you see there's a gap under here. That means the holder, the cube, have to go down some more. Okay. You see how the intensity brings out the glow and the and that effect, right? So if we play, you can see. Boom. Fixing see so it definitely need to go down on the back of the back wheel right and let's check pause it let's check the material intensity one more time it's not even let's give it like nine or up a little bit Okay, so we can give that material for the wheels stripes, for the bike stripes, okay? So all we have to do is very cool, it's very power cause the intensity it's like almost 10. Very cool. So we probably have to turn it down small. Okay. Or we will duplicate. We will duplicate it so we can have the ones that are going to the bike a little smaller in, in intensity. And the trail one that are following will have higher intensity. All right. Very cool. So you see the end part of this course is where the fun is, right? So we will do the sound and then we are, we are like, damn, all right? So very cool. Going to spend some time on the sound too. So very cool. See, it's little things, but you got to know where to tweak them, where they are. See, like this, you would think like we work on some crazy effect, but it's just the trail, which has been out in Unity for a long time, right? So it's just a matter of hitting the intensity real hard, right? 
So, little things. But it's too strong for the bike. It's kind of taking all the energy on the bike paint and everything. So we definitely need to duplicate this one. Control D. Okay, so we will say trial, rename it to bike. And we'll give one to the rear trial. So, so let's see which one is going. For the for the stripes, let's see which one is it. The stripes, the one we just put on, is using under the material the renderer is using the trial ones. So this one we can turn down the intensity. Okay? Because it's too strong for the bike. See? Give it. And also, for the colors, let's get around this area for the bike. Maybe too strong for still get back to the blue side a little bit so these are all like you go in and you tweak but you see how it's affecting our bike colors too much okay so it's just a matter of tweaking so we will not spend time too much in the next class i will have it tweak better for the bike but let's finish. Let's give the trial one which one is is using. So if we go in inside a bike, select the trail, and we go under materials. Oh, go back to cube and under materials. Yeah, give it this one. Okay, give it this one, and then and then the trial will have it. Will have will have this trial ones. Okay, where is okay? The trial will have this one. There you go. So at this point, we can boost the trial ones with more intensity. So it's not bad. So let's play our last play and I will see you in the next class where we will start working on the sound and make some little adjustments. All right, guys. So let's go back to timeline. We need to add it to, to the first bike. We will do that in the next class. Guys, you see, very cool. work on the bike strikes to match the bike and also bring it down from the back okay so that when we come to the next class it's all set for the sounds all right so i'll see you guys in the okay guys welcome let's continue from the last class okay the last class we created some trials for the bike and i made copies of the trials and I turn down the intensity okay so the bike strikes is using the same trial material but the intensity is very low so you guys can go in if you want it to be higher you can crank it up you can go way higher if I copy this and I go higher see you can get it to how you want it it's up to you so that option is there so the bike have 1.6 and the trials have strong intensity okay 
the trial have 8.8 .8, so it's very strong so that is what is going on and i also if we come into the environment i also created some cubes if i drop it down i have some cubes here but it's 10 off right now so as we play you see how the environment is kind of like it's not too much going on you see we could have created our own nice environment for this you know particular cause but it's okay because we are more focused on the effects and getting all these key frames and you know these sequence and cut right so it's up to you to go in and create some cool stuff but i made these cubes and i use some of let me turn it on so it's just a few cubes that I put it around, right? So if I go up, turn and render on, and turn them on, okay? So you see, I use the same trial materials. I only add texture to one of them. This one, I add texture to the emission. So the emissive have a material to it. And I put them around the scene. So if we play, you see a bunch of them around. Okay. So this class is going to be about the sound. And it's supposed to be our last class. The next class, we will touch on the colors and the post-processing and little touches, right? So basically, you will try to get all the sounds and everything. So let's play and you guys see what's going on. See? So it make it not too boring like before, right? We, we got to see some stuff going on, but it's just a cubes. All right, cool. So let's focus on the sounds because we're going to play more when we are working on the sound. So for the sounds, we have to give it a track, an audio track. Okay. And the audio track is requesting an audio source and we get audio source from the camera. Okay. So let's drop the camera in all right cool so before we continue let's go into our project and see if we have the sounds in here we don't have sounds so let's go back to the desktop on our resources folder let's drop in the sounds Okay, you can drop the whole folder in. So if we open it, we have a couple of audios in here, right? We got crash, drive, four steps, jump, model of and pass so let's go back to the timeline and inside our track for audios if we go to the beginning what do we need before that let's bring the audio track up so that we can go down more there you go cool so so the first is what audio clip four steps double click it and it comes in but we're gonna time in when we need it and when we don't need it it's just a matter of timing it out okay so he runs so we gotta scrub that because it's very fast he runs he runs so right here he jumps so here after he jumps we don't need the four, four step sound, so we gotta shorten it. Okay, that is how we're gonna work on the on the sounds and the audios. Just move them around to where we need it to end and start. Okay, so he runs, he jumps. Okay. So the place he jumped, we can continue from, we 
can continue with the jump sound. The jump sound is kind of like effect when he's revealing the bike. So let's see where that ends. Okay, so it kind of match it pretty good, you know, just about where he drops the the bike. So the next one will be drive, okay? So the drive clip is kind of long. You can shorten it if you want to, but let's text it. So he jumps. Where, where he dropped, where he dropped the bike, you will want to switch the sound right after he drops the bike so that Over there, let's bring in all of this. You can switch them around. You don't have to use specific one. The only one you know is for four steps. You, you can't use four step for drive, right? So the drive, those pass and motor off, you, you will find them the right places. So let's bring in pass and see. Because that have kind of different strong sound. So let's test. There you go, nice. So we can bring in back again the drive. Because the drive, we can switch between the pass and the drive. So here he's continuing driving. So let's bring back pass. Let's shorten the drive a little bit. Let's bring back pass. Let's play. still driving so let's bring back drive you can shorten them so you don't have to worry drive okay and where the bike is about to fall it will switch to where like moto is failing or something so let's get to that point yeah so from here from here where he's falling means there's something wrong with the model okay so let's bring in model off okay let's see we're trying them so it looks like we is matching all right see so at this point we can bring in the crash so the motor fail it will shorten it a little bit so all this point he will be crashing the bike so let's bring in the crash, the crash sound. Let's see. There 
there you go so guys there you have it so you can go in and mix match the sounds to make it much better for you okay so what we can do now is you know test it on the full screen and see how we did so in the next class I would like to work on the eyes a little bit you know because we need a different material for the eyes we will touch the post processing and see maybe we can change some colors we will go in little touches right so that will be our final class okay guys but before we go let's play a full screen and see how things go with the sound so let's make sure on parent it's not on okay that's about it and we can make room and also give it just one game view and turn on the maximize get to the beginning and let's hit play very cool guys so i will see you guys in the next class all right okay guys we made it to the final class in this course as part of this cool series going on okay so in this class we're going to tackle a few things because we know we don't want to like you know work too hard for our final class we're going to make things easy so what I did is we had a true animation but what happened is anytime we play he just throw the hands just go there's nothing going out so I spent a little time about two seconds I created I created a cylinder right here and I put it inside the writer's hand. See? So now he has something he can throw. So the, the process is, it's just a cylinder. Create 3D object cylinder. And then I scale it to make it smaller, okay? And I gave it some of the materials we've been working on all right so materials and i gave this trial another I, I made a copy of the trials and this one i name it disc so like a disc he's holding okay so where it goes is what i want you to make a note of it goes inside the hand the hand bone so when you drop down the main skeleton and you find the hand bone then you put it in it's just like you are giving a sword to a game character right so we can see now he's holding something so if we come back to the track what is going on is i gave it the cylinder i gave the cylinder activation so we want it's not all the time we want to see the disc okay so when he, his hands go back there the disc will be activated and i also gave it animation track and i animate small to throw so that when he do the throw the dicks will get out it will move forward when he moves forward the activating will get shorter so we don't see it around anymore so we kind of have a little throw dicks going on all right very cool so we can play it to see i want us to to work on on the eyes before we we play it okay 
So let's get back to the scene. And here, if I select the character, Okay, so the eyes is what I want us to give it a different material. Okay, so let's select him. We did not even tweak his material, his texture, but you guys can go in. It's just a basic material. You can go in and make it look better. But there's a default material that is the eyes. Okay, so all we have to do is make a new material. So maybe we can let it glow a little bit or something. So maybe we can duplicate the trial. Let's try that, okay? Let's duplicate the trial one. Let's name it. Rename to eyes. Okay. So if we. It's here. So if we go back to the writer. And under the default material for the eyes. We can drop our new eye material in here. See. Now he get this glow cool eyes right very cool you see we didn't do nothing we didn't even change nothing and we can leave it like that or we can make it red pink or something but this this work fine you see so we can leave it like that so most of the materials and texture we use we didn't work so hard on it we just made copies so far about one two three four five so that is how when you can reuse stuff and you don't spend too much time the dix is just a cylinder just like our ground so very little things could give you something cool you don't work too hard we will test what we have done and we will end this course okay we will set things up and we will play what we have a little bit this is it guys so in the next course it's going to be more cooler, right? It's going to be more particles, more kind of stuff. So if, if I play a little bit, you guys can see what's going on. So what I will leave you guys to do that we didn't do, the hermit, you can animate the hermit. So before he, like, when he start to run, he'll be wearing no hermit, right? And then as soon as he jump, you'll bring in the hermit in, right? But our running was faster. That's why we did not worried about the hermits right but you can animate all of that to make it more sci-fi and everything cooler right so you can animate the hermit pieces little and little so now you know that how you will go in and animate keyframe all these little stuff to make cool things you, you go in and you start doing it like that okay very simple stuff if now you're going to do this you how quick you you do it because I try to explain and talk too much, that's why it get longer. But you need those explanations, right? For especially the new guys that are like, you know, new to this.
but all of you that already know how to get around this, you pick the new tricks and the new styles and you combine them. It also gives you confidence that already you are on the right track. That is how everybody is doing it, all right? So we will end this class, which is our fan act for this course. So thank you guys, and I will see you in the next course. So let's set it up and play a full screen, then we will end this section, all right? So let's go for the bike. Make sure on parent is not on. And then hit play. He lands, he lifts slow mo, he drop it back. Move around. There you go. Look at the eyes, very cool. Very cool. This thing is getting ready to throw. Get this, get it, throw it. Tail running around. So that's how you do it, guys. The accident. Boom. And then the eyes coming all bright, everything looking right. Okay, guys. So thank you, guys, and I'll see you in the next course.